Okay, recording in progress. Welcome everybody. This is Manhattan Community Board One. Uh, this is our full board meeting. I'm Chair Tammy Meltzer at 607. We're going to call the meeting to order with our format uh, that we have started this year. We will have a timer up on the screen and each member of the public gets two minutes to speak. And then after that, we close the public session. We vote approval of our minutes. And then if any of our elected officials are here, they will speak during the business session. Okay, so without further ado, let's open up the public session and let's welcome Arthur Piccolo. So Jen, if you can find Mr. Piccolo in the attendee section. Hi, thank you very much. Um, I'm here to speak in opposition, strong opposition to the Heritage Trail markers that you're going to be asked to approve tonight. The, our streetscape is one of the most important aspects. It's the most visible aspect of this community. We should be doing better. We should be preparing for the future, especially after COVID-19. This proposal presented by the Alliance is nothing more than the exact same historic markers that were installed 30 years ago. 30 years ago. This was also, as usual, the Alliance comes to the board, not in a participatory way. They come to tell you, this is what they have decided to do. The whole process is flawed. I hope even though the committee voted highly in favor of this, there are enough board members who will say to the Alliance, we wanna participate in this process. We do not want you simply coming to us and telling us what you wanna do and asking us to approve it. This process should involve benchmarking what other major cities around the world are doing with their historic markers, especially here in the 21st century. It should be a joint effort with all the stakeholders, not the Alliance, which is basically a real estate industry lobbying group coming to the Alliance and saying, do this. You have the power today to say to them, not good enough, not good enough the way you've done this. Let's begin again with the full participation of the community board the community board, which is the representative of the entire community. So I hope we will not be having a positive vote tonight that basically is the end of the story. If these historic markers are replaced from 30 years ago and the Alliance is allowed to continue to do this, we're not gonna see another proposal to do something better for years to come because the answer is gonna be, we've already made a decision to do this. Please vote no. Tammy, you're on mute. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Piccolo, for coming. Thank you for your um, participation. Next, we're going to move to Jody Pinto from Poseidon. Tammy, I don't see their name on the attendees list. Okay. Uh, Ro Rosalind Newman. Can you guys hear me? Loud and clear, welcome. Okay, hi, I'm talking for Jody. Jody actually was this person that was going to speak. She, uh, she I live at 124 Chambers and there is a petition to put uh, a restaurant and bar in on the ground floor that would stay open until 2 a.m. And uh, Jody lives right above that bar. I live on the fourth floor of that building and uh, that um, would definitely disturb her work in her loft and it would disturb the building to have that um, in there until 2 a.m. The li liquor license that was asked for, that would go until 2 a.m. at 124 well, Chambers. Thank you, Rosalind. So are you against, your, I assume you're saying that you would I'm not against, yeah. The 2 a.m. the 2 a.m. time. There's always been a restaurant bar in that location until last year or a year and a half ago, and it always closed at about 12. Okay. All right. So thank you very much. Do you know if 
um, Ms. Pinto is coming as well later. She's trying. Yeah, she is trying and she is the one that was going to speak to it. I was here as her support. Okay, I'll look and see if she manages to log on. Thank you so much. Okay. Um, yeah. Are you good then? Uh, I'm good until she gets here. Gotcha. Alrighty, then we'll move on to our next speaker. Thank you so much. Um, we're going to go to trying to make sure I hit everybody um, who's here. Um, we're going to go to Roseanne Perry. Okay. Hi, Roseanne. Welcome. Hi, thank you. I'd um, like to discuss affordable housing for the lower, the lower Manhattan as it relates to the construction of World Trade Center 5 site. And there's an awful lot of information that's been collected, and I'm just going to touch on some of it right now. Okay, make sure you talk into the mic, please, because you're a little low. It's hard to hear you. Tammy, I'm sorry, this is the secretary. I didn't hear what she was speaking for. Repeat. Okay, I'm like speaking speak about now. affordable housing at Five World Trade Center. Thank you. Exactly. So you can restart can you hear her me time. Now? Am I speaking loud and clear? Hello? You're still a little muted, so if you can use your biggest voice possible, we would appreciate it. Okay, so here I am. Um, can you hear me now? Quite well, thank in the, you. In a memorandum from Manhattan Community Board 1 in fiscal year 2016, I'm going to read this quote. It is a priority to ensure existing rent stabilized and affordable housing units continue. We must ensure that people who reach our children roll our streets and fight our fires and afford to live in the neighborhoods they serve. That, in the original spirit of the initial formation of LMDC under the EDC in November of 2001, rebuild Lower Manhattan and to finance new housing for a wide variety of income levels. And yet, in the nearly 20 years since 9 11, in the expenditure of roughly $40 billion, the redevelopment has not resulted in a single new affordable housing complex. And now the EDC has proposed, has proposed the new WTC Tower 5 to be developed in large part by Silverstein Properties and Brookfield Properties into a new 900-foot tower with 1,325 residential units, of which only nine, of which 995 will be luxury and only 330 will be deemed permanently affordable along with office, retail, community facility, and public amenity spaces. I request that Community Board 1 continue to advocate for affordable housing for our community in a public and transparent way to help us make our voices heard. Lower Manhattan needs more luxury housing units like a hole in the head. Lower Manhattan needs affordable housing for the 9-11 survivors and their children, for the first responders and their children, for the teachers, healthcare workers, and the people who make the city run. I ask that MCB1 continue to be a vital part of this movement. We propose that all of the residential units built in the new center live be for affordable housing. And I thank you. Thank you very much for coming, Roseanne, and thank you for speaking out. Um, Diane Stein is next, and after Diane Stein, we're going to go to Pat Gray. Hi, can you hear? Me? I can, Diane. Welcome. Oh, hi, hi. Okay, my name is Diane Stein. I'm a public member of Community Board One on the Quality of Life Committee. Um, and for identification purposes, I'm also on the executive board of the Independence Plaza Tenants Association, and I'm speaking in favor of the Quality of Life Committee's resolution to support Senate Bill S2864A that would ref reform and enhance scree and jury applicability in New York City. Scree and jury are rent freeze programs, and residents of IPN and other Mitch, former Mitchell Lama buildings are currently not eligible to apply for scree and jury under this, but this legislation would extend eligibility of these programs and allow these people to remain in the communities that they helped build. 
Um, I also want to add that the landlords do will receive a tax credit for the difference in what the rent could be. Um, so they won't be losing money. Um, and I know our tenants association president, she said she'd submitted written comments and hopefully um, she will, Diane Lapson will be able to log in. Um, this, uh, you know, like somebody said before, you know, the people who, you know, the, the firefighters, the teachers, you know, the people who like help establish um, the community are going to be forced out. Um, and I just hope I, I urge the, I hope that the community board votes yes in support of this in favor of this resolution. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming. That's great. Um, next. Hi, can you hear me? I can welcome. Great. Thank you. Okay, so my name is Pat Gray. Uh, and I live in Battery Park City and I'm a member of the local organization. Battery Park City for black lives matter and I'm here to invite everyone to an online forum. That we're hosting June 4th of democratic candidates for Manhattan borough president. Our goal in creating this forum is to provide a unique opportunity for our community to hear directly from candidates how they are prepared to respond to the community needs through the lens of racial and social justice. When we go to vote, we need to know what we can hope to expect from the candidates on this essential front. Six of the seven candidates running are confirmed to participate in alpha order. They are Lindsay Boylan, Elizabeth Caputo, Brad Hoyleman, Ben Kalos, Mark Levine and Kimberly Watkins. The forum takes place Friday, June 4th, 6.30 to 8.30 p.m. To access it online on June 4th, go to, this is the name of the link, smarturl.it backslash bcp4blm. Again, that's smarturl.it backslash bcp for blm. The host moderators are Dr. Annika Kamela Muzak, licensed clinical psychologist with sorry psychologist with expertise in human behavior and group dynamics, and Matthew Fenton, journalist and editor of the Broadsheet Daily, serving our community. I'm going to put this information into the chat. Um, I'm not entirely sure how this works, but I think I should be asking if this could be shared with everyone. Uh, with Gail Brewer term limited and, and now applying running for Helen Rosenthal's seat in the in New York City's council 6th district. Um, this the borough president's position is now open. We salute a BP candidate. I'm sorry, Pat, but we do, we're doing two minutes for everybody, but we were, we're happy much like we would in person. If you had a flyer that you could leave on the doorstep, we are happy to put the link. Um, the well, chat. Tammy, I, I, if this is about election stuff, then I think that we're going to have to oh, no, um, no, no. stay away from any kind. That of, is true. We don't do elections. Yeah. I think it was, and, uh, and um, if there's anybody else talking about forums, we just, this this can't be a a place for that. So for just moving forward, all but yes, sorry. Yeah, we're not allowed to do electoral things here, uh, on the community board level. If that clears that up at all, I thought a Black Lives Matter form. Okay, um, moving on. Let's do Winifred Lee from Grow NYC. Hi, can you hear me? I can, Winifred. Welcome. Hi. Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Winifred Lee, and I work with the Tribeca Green Market that I'm pretty sure many of you already know. It's on um, Greenwich Street uh, between Chambers and Reed Street, and we're there every Saturday. And on Wednesdays now, um, our, we have a baker, Meredith's Bread, and Jersey Farm uh, bringing their vegetables right now on Wednesdays. And on Saturdays is our bigger market, which has almost everything now. It has meat, it has fruits, it has vegetables. It has mushrooms, it has, yeah, literally almost any meat that you can think of. Um, so, yeah, I just wanted to let everybody um, on the board know that the market um, is back in full swing. Uh, we're still not doing cooking demonstrations yet because, you know, we're just not sure about uh, 
COVID safety stuff. So just come on by and say hi to the farmers. They've been there for a long time, and we have a new um, fisherman that has replaced um, Alex Vellani of Blue Moon Fish, um, American Pride Seafood, who's going to come regularly now. And then in the next couple of weeks, the owner, uh, Glenn Bigelman, will be coming to get to know the community better, too. He's been there in the past, in the wintertime, when, when, uh, when Alex didn't come. But uh, yeah, if you have any questions about the market, feel free to let me know. Um, you can come by and meet Sean, who's the market manager there now. And if you, yeah, if there's a way that I can share the flyer too with you guys, I know in the past we've left flyers like you guys were talking about. If there's a way that you're doing it digitally today, just let me know and I'll gladly send you, email you, or post it somewhere if you want. Thank you. Um, so when, I'm going to put my email in the chat for you. You send it to me and I'll, I'll make it available to everyone in the meeting. Thank you so much. We can also include it in our newsletter over the weekend, so that'll work. Oh, I really Thanks. appreciate that. Thank you, guys. My pleasure. I do see Jody Pinto has joined us. Jody, um, have you figured out your audio? Jen, I see her in the attendee list. I just don't see that she's able to mute or unmute. Right. She's a second. I'll reach out to her just to see double check of troubleshoot for that would be great. Yeah. All right. So then moving along, uh, we have Bo August here. Bo, I believe you're the applicant. Yep. Hi everyone. My my name is Bo August. I am the applicant and asset manager for 140 Broadway, representing the owner. I'm speaking in support of the DOT revocable consent for five benches on the Broadway sidewalk at 140 Broadway. And what we are proposing, what we believe responds to the concerns of the community board last year and the direction that they gave us, uh, you guys gave us, was to negotiate a plan which meets the, need, meets the needs of the vendors and the pedestrians while upholding the aesthetic integrity of the plaza. Since last year, uh, the street vendor and I have collaborated through several meetings and discussions with the vendors themselves to come up with a plan that could meet the needs of both the vendors and us, the landlord. So we believe this plan strikes a balance between those stakeholders um, and, and the historical significance of the plaza itself. Specifically, it improves and preserves the historical view corridor between Zuccotti and the building and the Noguchi Cube. It allows all food vendors to stay and is supported by the street vendor project and it provides seating for the public benefit. So when you consider this proposal, I'd ask that you keep three things in mind. First, there is no rule that prohibits vending on POPs plazas. There are rules for permitted obstructions, which are permanent structures, but not food vendors because they're not permanent. Two, the required size of this plaza is 15,000 square feet, but the actual size is 28,000 square feet. So it's nearly twice as large as required. And we're talking about a small portion on Liberty Street that is on the sidewalk. And three, Plazas over 10,000 square feet are required to provide food service as an amenity, but we're unable to do that because of our landmark status. So this is a gray area with competing interests and different governing commissions, but ultimately your job is to represent the public's interest and decide what is best for the public benefit within these constraints. And we feel this proposal is the best thing for the public and strikes a balance between all those. Provides for the public benefit, provides for the vendor's livelihoods, and equally provides. Thank you very much. Bo for joining us. I'm sorry we do have a two minute limit. As you know, you've heard me say that already. Moving on to Justine Kucha. Justine, I know you're one of our board members, but you're looking to talk during the public session. Yes, this is me. I'm sorry. I had to chase my puppy. Um, I'm back. And um, I just would like to take a moment to reflect on the fact that today is the one year anniversary of George Floyd's um, murder. And I'd ask for this board to take a moment of silence and reflect on that. I'd also like to comment and call attention to all the um, hate crimes that have been happening in our neighborhood, in our city, and in our country against Asians, against Jews, against black people, against so many different people and taking this time to reflect upon it and really do some soul searching. 
for the next whatever 15 seconds that I'm going to give um, and really think of what we can do to do better, whether we're bystanders or whatever we are. Thank you. Justine, thank you. Jody Pinto, you are next. I see that you do have your audio fixed. Uh, Jen is going to unmute you. Fine. There you go. Welcome, I'm... Jody. Yeah. Um, I'd like to speak uh, to um, an application from Poseidon uh, Restaurant that will be locating at 124 Chambers Street on the first floor, of course. I live and work for 40 years on the floor directly above them. I'm a professional artist, um, and I see that in their application, they want to operate uh, Friday and Saturday until 2 in the morning. There is no restaurant in all the 40 years I've been there that has had hours like that. Um, they all, the restaurant before Poseidon was Echo. And I got along, we, the building got along fine with Echo. They closed at 12, sometimes before 12. Um, but these hours that Poseidon is proposing are insane. Um, we have three restaurants between Poseidon and uh, the end of the block. Uh, we have a sports bar about 20 feet from them. Uh, and then another uh, restaurant at the end of the block where a hotel is. So I'm asking uh, the board to please reconsider their application based on uh, the notice that says they want to stay open until two in the morning. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you very much. And thank you, Jody, so much for the extra efforts to sign in tonight. We appreciate <laughs> it. All righty. Okay. Uh, Amy. Can we ask her if other people in the building feel the same before she leaves and we can talk about it at the committee? Yes, I'm, I'm fine with that. Oh. Yes, uh, they do feel that way. Um, uh, the, the person that was speaking before for me, uh, Roz Newman lives on the fourth floor. And when there is noise below, she can hear it. Perfect. Well, and Ro and she came and spoke for herself. So I think uh, that's, you know, I think that's two neighbors. I have one question as, sure. as, as with Mark. Did they not get notice for our committee meeting? Did they not post Poseidon uh, uh, the, the information so they could have come to the committee meeting? I think so yes i think they they could have come to the to the meeting no no I, i'm asking if you uh had gotten notice this is a different meeting we had a committee meeting but that's all right we'll deal with it thank you okay thank you that is a good question though whether or not notices were actually posted i believe jen can answer that i believe they were but that's another point okay Okay, awesome. Thank you both. And thank you, Jody, for coming. I'm going to move along. I see Kim and I apologize. I don't think I'm going to say your last name right. Kim Ber Berrio. Ber 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 thank you. Thank you so it's, much. it's difficult. So it's not you. Thank you for coming. 
So thank you for letting me speak. I just want to speak in favor, <coughs> excuse me, of the Scree and Dree resolution tonight. As a lifelong Independence Plaza and Community Board One resident, we have planted and rooted ourselves into this community. And after living here and preserving this community to be uprooted from your home due to a disability that you're stricken with or a low retirement income because you can't afford to pay your rent would be harmful to this segment of the population. It would not only affect every, it would not affect every retiree and possibly not every disabled person. However, we should still have the option for those who need it. The values and character of this community have been built by the people who live here, including myself, who came before it was posh to live downtown Manhattan. We have contributed to our community in order to have a good quality of life here, especially those who have lived here lifelong. So to offer this screed tree eligibility to this population would give them an opportunity to stay in their homes and would not only preserve our neighborhoods and community board one, I believe culturally we need the diversity. Thank you for letting me speak. Thank you very much for coming, Kim. Alrighty, I'm looking to see if I see any other of the members of the public. I do not. Um, so we're going to move from here into who have signed in. Let me just quickly take a look one more time. Uh, the joy of technology instead of a piece of paper on refreshing the browser. Okay, I do not see any other um, members of the public who have uh, signed in. So we're going to move on to our elected representatives who are here. Okay, great. Oopsie. Uh, hmm. Okay, I've gotten two notifications from members of the public who could not sign in um, due to the update for the app. I'm gonna see if I can send them a telephone number instead. But on that note, until they come in, let's move on with our elected representatives and we'll start with Claudia Zhu. Thank you, Claudia. Good evening, everyone. This is Claudia from Assembly Member News Office. Uh, for the month of May, this is Asian American Pacific Islander Heritage Month, and this past Saturday, we hosted our annual Heritage Month celebration at Confucius Plaza in Chinatown. Thank you to everyone who joined us for a very, very hot afternoon, uh, and I hope you were able to grab a scoop of ice cream from our local Chinatown ice cream factory. Um, earlier this month, um, Yulene also passed a resolution in the assembly. She shared API Heritage Month means looking beyond the Asian community as just numbers and demographics and economic activity and seeing us as your friends, family, neighbors, and community members. It means celebrating us as New Yorkers who have been through hell and still wake up proud to live and work here. Um, in addition, Yulene has also hosted a conversation on Mental Health Action Day, which was this past um, May 20th. Um, to discuss the impact of the pandemic on women's mental health and what resources are needed to better address our community's mental health needs. Um, the footage is hyperlinked on our board report that Lucian has kindly put into the drive. Um, please feel free to watch later at your convenience. And we are in the final days of the legislative session and Yulene is pushing for a number of her legislation to be considered for a vote. Um, most notably, um, the Consumer and Small Business Protection Act, which would update our state's out-of-date consumer protection laws, is one of the key legislation she is hoping to get through. Uh, we have just right around two weeks left, um, and we have recently held a legislative briefing to push for more support on this, and the link to the legislation uh, legislative briefing is also on our board report. Um, and with that, thank you, everyone, and have a lovely evening. Please feel free to reach out to me if you have any other questions. Thank you, Tammy. You know, Claudia, because we started uh, the elected representatives at 635, if you have anything else to add, you have a little bit more time. I promise not to cut you off. <laughs> I will add in another 30 seconds next time. <gasps> okay, so then, uh, sorry about that. We're all good. Um, moving on, just check in who's with us. Uh, after Claudia, we'll go to Luke Wolf. 
and then we'll do Cora, Hannah, and Chantel. Luke, you're next. Hi everyone, Luke Wolf from uh, City Controller Scott Schrinner's office here. Uh, short report this month. I hope you're all doing well. Um, just two updates to share. First is today, uh, Controller Schrinner is proud to launch what we're calling the COVID-19 Recovery Center. And this is an online platform to connect New Yorkers with city, state, and federal relief efforts and services. We know there are a lot of programs that came out of the city, state, and federal packages recently. So this is a one-stop shop website available in English, Chinese, and Spanish with all the information, links, uh, and other opportunities, whether you're a tenant, small business, homeowner, et cetera. Uh, it came through tonight, so I didn't have a chance to send it over in advance, but I will make sure to uh, drop a link and also email it so it can be included in further uh, board correspondence. Uh, another thing we've been focused on also tied to our recovery is, of course, our small businesses. So last week, the controller announced a survey of over 500 MWBE small businesses across the city. And what we learned was over 50% of them were forced to lay off or furlough employees during the pandemic. And these are of the ones that are still in business and were available to answer our survey. In addition, more than 30% of those in business MWBEs said they were going to be unable to pay rent in the next three months. So in light of these findings, we made a number of recommendations uh, to really boost small businesses coming out of the recovery. We have to make sure their positions succeed. Uh, and I think the survey demonstrates there's still a lot more work to do um, to make sure that they're able to make it out of this. So there's just two updates from our office. And once again, I'll drop that recovery center in the chat um, and welcome everyone to take a look available in English, Spanish and Chinese. Um, and I hope everyone has a good night. Thank you very much, Luke. Moving on next. Laura. Oh, sorry. That's okay. Take a deep, take a deep breath. We're good. No, I thought there's someone else before me. Sorry. Hi, everyone. It's Cora Fong from Council Member Margaret Chin's office. Uh, on the legislative side, we want to share with you that She's working with the city council to push forward a legislative package that raises labor standards for delivery workers, including requiring restaurants to give workers access to bathrooms. Next one. Justine Couture, thank you for making that one minute silence and talking about hate crimes. Uh, Councilmember Chin also is proud to introduce and pass a resolution with Councilmember Ku in Flushing, calling on Congress to pass and the President to sign the COVID-19 Hate Crimes Act. This act will expedite the federal review of hate crimes by the Department of Justice. And this month is Asian American Pacific Icelander Heritage Month. We just celebrated it last night, honoring community leaders. On the executive budget, Council Member Chin continued to advocate for increasing funding for senior centers and summer programs for NYC youth. And she also was very happy to see the mayor actually included $10 million in model budget funding for existing senior centers. Uh, she's also happy to see the mayor set aside $39 million in funding to build 25 new senior centers in underserved neighborhoods. Um, Council Member Chin is on the budget negotiation team, so we'll give you informed of all the um, budget ongoing thing, but um, North is also on her priority list. Uh, as you all know, for 250 Water Street, it was certified that by the Department of City Planning, and it's going to move on to the EULA process by all of your reviews. Uh, on the lighthearted side, Tammy, give me five seconds, something happy. Street co-naming five. You've got another minute, don't worry. Like I told okay. Claudia, take a deep okay. breath, you're good. Something happy on the lighthearted side, we have five points. If you remember, that was in 2019, so the dedication is coming along. Maybe in June, we'll keep you posted. Uh, with the ribbon cutting for Bogadis Plaza, it's going to happen this Thursday morning. Uh, Fresh food for seniors, all the partners, Alliance Downtown, BPCA, they are all ready. And uh, thanks to Borough President's office, we're trying to do a short season, but of course, depending on the reopening of the senior centers. And lastly, we're happy 
that we have detective first grade Tommy Moran is sad but happy. He's going to retire. The walkout ceremony is on this Friday from 1 to 3 p.m. at the first precinct. Please come say hello to send your personal wishes. We're going to honor him for his 27 years of public service. Thank you for his courage, integrity, and humor. You beat me to it. It's in my slide report, Cora. I just think we should hire Tommy to, you know, cook for our eventual holiday party when we have one. All right, so let's move on after Cora. Who do we have on deck tonight? Hannah Wienerman. Welcome, Hannah. Hi, can you hear me? We can. You have three minutes, so don't worry. Fantastic. So pleasure to be with you all tonight. Um, so the House passed Congressman Nadler. Oh, sorry, I'm Hannah Wienerman from Congressman Jerry Nadler's office. Uh, last week, the House passed, or maybe it was two weeks ago, the um, Mr. Nadler's Pregnancy Workers Fairness Act on a bipartisan vote. Uh, this bill will deliver fairness and dignity to pregnant workers by requiring employers to provide reasonable accommodation. It was introduced in the last Congress. We're hoping that it gets speedily passed in this Congress. Um, Last week, the Judiciary Committee held a historic hearing on the Tulsa Greenwood Race Massacre of 1921. So three survivors that were all 100 years old, over 100 years old, uh, provided testimony and their voices and their experiences are a really crucial part of understanding our complex history as a nation. So um, Mr. Nather was really pleased and privileged to be part of that hearing. Um, the Congressman was also uh, proud to have been at the White House when President Biden signed the COVID-19 Hates Crime Act into law. Um, that's the bill that Cora referenced. Um, you know, we've seen this uptick in anti-Asian hate in the country, and it's vile and repugnant, and we um, are pleased to see that it got signed into law so quickly. And, you know, we have to make sure that we um, look out for each other and make sure that we condemn them as, you know, harshly as possible. Um, Lastly, so as Justine referenced, um, this is the one year anniversary of the murder of George Floyd, uh, George Floyd and Congressman Nather is really pushing the Senate to pass the George Floyd Justice and Policing Act. So we're going to continue updating as we have more information. Um, as always, if you have any federal issues, if there's any, you know, a, a bunch of the small business um, grant programs have been, you know, uh, applications are open and money has been allocated. But if you have any questions about it, you can feel free to call our office and I will, I will end here. Thank you all. Wow, that was super fast, but thank you very, very much. Um, okay, moving along after Hannah. Who do I have next? I have Chantel. Jamie, could, could we have Jennifer check to see who that call in user is just in case? Um, yeah, that'd somebody... be great. So there's a call in user. 917885. Jennifer's going to unmute you. Could you uh, identify yourself? Yes, hi. It's, it's Roger Byram Lucian. I've been having trouble uh, logging in through the computer. So um, I've called, called it on my cell phone. Oh, you know what, Roger, um, if you want to just hang on, we'll have you go right after the rest that we have one more, I think, elected. Or do you want to go now since you're open? Mike open, Chantel doesn't mind waiting, I'm sure. Okay, well, that's probably more efficient. Yes, thank you. Uh, again, my apologies. I've been having all sorts of computer problems. Um, I just wanted to to uh, comment uh, in thanks for, for, for all the hard work that the community board has put into uh, focus on the 250 Water Street issue. I have to say that as a lifelong preservationist, I have never witnessed such a, an abhorrent uh, it, it, disdain for the landmarks law. Um, we all know what the spirit of the law was meant to be. And the commissioners, uh, all those other than the two that uh, rejected the application, have completely um, uh, given up any ethics that they had for that their position and, and for what the law says. Um, we, we are pushing on to um, try and have uh, a, a, a judge agree with us, and we feel quite strongly that they will. Um, and that's moving along in process by uh, the papers that have been filed. But I just want to also uh, ask the community board to continue to focus on the ULIP uh, application, because that is another area that, uh, as far as I'm aware, 
um, Howard Hughes are basically telling EDC and the rest of us and, and CPC uh, what they want. And, and, and as we've seen at LPC, they just seem to be able to buy their way into getting laws ignored and preferential treatment. So I hope you will be able to follow up on that as well. But I thank you for the work uh, that you did uh, at, at LPC. Thank you. Thank you, Roger. I'm sorry for the issues. I know sometimes when the website needs to be updated, it's very difficult to uh, have the app update in time for the meeting. So thank you for dialing in. Um, and if you don't mind putting your hand down at that point, that would be great. Chantel. Let's unmute Chantel. And Chantel, is this your last CB1 meeting with us? It is my last CB1 meeting in this capacity. Ooh. Ooh so <laughs> share what you can and absolutely. Um, how how am I? I want to turn on my video for my last uh, viewing here. I'll tell you what, what I'm going to have them move you over to panelists so you can do that. Oh, wonderful. Oh, thank you. Oh, okay. Look at the, the technology here is just on point. Start video. All righty. Can you Hi. see me? Hi, everybody. Um, uh, so I just wanted to thank everybody on the board as usual, Tammy and Lucian, thank you so much and all of the board members for having me. I know it was a, a quick two to three months as far as myself liaising for C, uh, CB1, but it was a wonderful two to three months. Um, I just wanted to let everyone know on the call that uh, the rent relief program application is meant to go live this Tuesday 6-1. I'm going to go ahead and throw the OTDA um, link in there so that everyone can access it. Um, for those of you who believe that you might be eligible, take a look at the eligibility requirements. It's on right on the front landing page. Um, I just, uh, I also wanted to make available the language for S6903 related to screen injury for everyone. I will throw that in the chat as well. Um, so for anyone who was interested in, in taking a look at that, um, I have provided it for you for your reading pleasure. Uh, and uh, I just want to take a moment to acknowledge and uh, let everyone know that in our participation in the five world trade center CAC, we, you know, our office is intently listening and hearing um, the many different expression of need uh, and um, in particular, uh, in particular related to affordability. So we, we hear you um, and we hope to advocate for that and continue to be a partner in that process. And um, generally, I just wanted to say farewell to everyone in this capacity. You might see me next month on a quality of life meeting, maybe <laughs> in my new capacity. And um, as the uh, posting in our office uh, becomes available, uh, most likely, um, I'm hoping that we can get that out to the board so that you, you know, if, if anyone is in the district and meets the eligibility requirements, we'd love to have someone on from the community for sure. Look at that, two minutes. Tammy, can I ask Chantel a question? Absolutely, Absolutely. Mitch. Is that Mitch I hear? Yes. Uh, you know, I've mentioned this before, the rent relief thing. Did you guys ever get a chance to kind of cut through the, uh, that bureaucratic thing where they're just using the few months where they had a six hundred dollar pandemic, and, and which cut a lot of people off. Well, so if, related to that, that that rent relief is is separate and closed. That's the, that was the HCR program. So right. that is that is done. Um, okay. In relation, I'm not sure what the what the um, the metrics will be okay. coming out now. Um, but you can, okay. I know that. You're they're definitely not use those, they're not going to use those three or four months last year when they gave extra PUA, which which kind of and and then uh, as long as long as they're not doing that, then at least we have a chance. Yeah, I believe I believe that this is a, a little different as far as eligibility requirements, and it's a it's a larger uh, bucket of time. So okay. I think it'll be favorable to to better conditions for sure. Thank you. Thank you. Absolutely, Mitch. It was a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, and oh, finally, uh, uh, Eliana Cohen is going to be the interim liaison. She will be on next month. I'll drop her email um, for any inquiries moving forward. Uh, and I think Chantel has just pointed out a notification that I think would be a really smart thing. From now on, we're going to move all the reps over 
to panelists so we can see their faces. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you very much, Chantel. <laughs> you know, I'll see the you senator's all. loss is peace and pain. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you for being with us. Alrighty, um, our fantastic uh, Manhattan Borough President normally joins us. She is running quite late, and so we have Andrew Chang, who's here and is going to step up to the plate and speak now. If she does show, we are always delighted to have her as part of our meeting. Joys of virtual meetings and people behind me. Um, so, Andrew. On to you. Hello, can you all hear me? Yes, welcome. Welcome. Um, um, I haven't spoken at a full board meeting probably in a year since Gail, uh, the borough president, is usually here. Uh, she's over at an event at uh, Bryant Park right now, so she most likely won't be able to make it tonight. Uh, I just have a few things I want to say. First off is the community board appointment process. I know uh, some of y'all have reached out to me. We're still, um, we finalized appointments. We're just, you know, f uh, working on the letters and uh, hope to send those out soon within, uh, hopefully by the end of the month, by um, by June 1st, hopefully. And uh, secondly, we have a lot of ULERPs that we're, um, that are, that we're currently reviewing um, for for community board one, we're reviewing 250 Water Street. For community board two, we're reviewing Soho and NoHo. We also have the citywide text amendments, which aren't ULERPs, but you know our land use staff are working on. Which uh, th this includes citywide hotels, zoning for accessibility, health and fitness, and open streets. Um, at, at last week's Manhattan Vaccine Task Force meeting, we had. Uh, in NYC's uh, independent budget office who talk about the American Rescue Act and money and how it um, it can trickle down to our city. And they also had a Excel presentation on the um, on the money and how it, it would be more or less be divvied up. Um, and I'll put the uh, the link in the chat. Uh, these meetings are weekly at on Tuesdays at 3 p.m. And we focus on vaccines and reopening. And then lastly, I want to say that um, we received a number of complaints, noise and safety related complaints regarding fireworks, ATVs and dirt bikes. Um, earlier this month, the borough president sent a letter to the NYPD and Mayor de Blasio that included recommendations and requests to, for the city to be more responsive to, to rein in these ATVs and dirt bikes. Um, then I'll, I'll put a link to the, um, the, the letter in the chat as well. And that's all I have to report right now. Thank you. Hey, Craig. Someone just went in the shower. All right, so let's mute who's ever talking. Uh, because I think that might be not you, Andrew. So that's good. Um, <laughs> all righty. I think with that, I have I covered everyone from the public session. Susan, you have your hand up. Susan Cole, did you have a question for Andrew? No, not no. at all. Sorry. I'll take my hand down. Done. Okay. Alrighty. With that, Andrew, thank you so much. You never have to feel like you're not welcome at CB1. We do enjoy having the borough president with us, but thank you so much. And if you have a link to any of the flyers or upcoming things, then please um, share it with us. Alrighty. Um, I also wanted to recognize we do have some other members of the public who had troubles dialing in who are here. If we can get them to manage their audio, we will recognize them as well. Um, Barbara, Frischel, and then John Scott. So in that order, Jen, if you can. Sure, I see either of them on the attendees list. Um, I do see a call in number. I can unmute them. They're 917 7110. Hello. Hi, call in user. Okay, hello. Hello, you're unmuted. Jen, can you mute them back up? 
Perfect. And you can chat to them on the side. That would be fantastic. Um, then the last uh, member of the public who has let us know that they would like to speak is one of the applicants from the landscape architect from 140 Broadway who has his hand up. And so, Jen, if you can unmute him, he gets two minutes. That's Jackson Wandress. Hi, thank you, Tammy. Thank you, community board. Uh, this is Jackson Wandress. I'm the landscape architect that works for the consultants that was hired by the owner to uh, put together the design that proposed the five benches on Broadway. Um, and there's been, you know, a lot of talk about how this was an intentional move early on by the owner of the building to evict effectively the, the, the food carts from um, from the premises or from being on or near the plaza for that matter. Um, and I think I just wanted to point out, sort of reiterate some things that Bo August said earlier, which is that the compromise that we've struck with the food cart owners um, as represented by the street vendor project, you know, is a clear indication that that is not the case, that, you know, the, the owners of the building are not trying to get rid of food carts from in front of their building because they think they're an eyesore or something of that nature because um, the, the current proposed plan, which has evolved over the last year or so in, in, in conversation with um, the community board, preserves every single food cart vendor that is there today. It just moves them around a little bit. Um, and in doing that, it, it provides two major positive uh, improvements to the plaza. One is that it reopens that important uh, visual uh, sight line from the plaza, from inside the plaza, across the street to Zuccotti Park and vice versa. You can now finally, if you were to put the benches there and, and rearrange the food carts in the space, in and around the space, as we've proposed, you would be able to walk across, you know, down Broadway from across the street at Zuccotti Park and see across the street into the plaza and see the red cube from a distance, which right now you cannot do when the food carts are lined up six uh, next to each other, which is the way they are most days um, for the entire day. So it represents a great compromise um, and it does one additional thing that I think this plaza really benefits from. I'm absolutely aware of the historical um, uh, the, the designation of this plaza being historic and the building being historic and sympathetic to um, preserving historic landmarks wherever they may be. Um, that said, uh, these benches are extremely subtle pieces of furniture, meaning that they they don't have backs and they're very thin and they do not, um, you know, they do not present themselves in a gaudy manner. And what they do offer is a place for people to sit and enjoy the plaza, which nobody can do right now. Um, people would actually be able to sit, eat their lunch there, see the red cube, look across the street to do exactly. whatever. Yeah. Your, yeah. Two, your two minutes are up. Okay, thank you. I appreciate the opportunity to speak. Thank you. We're moving on. The next person who uh, apparently had some troubles, but it is here is Todd Fine. Hello, can you hear me? Loud and clear, Todd. Okay, hi, yes, I'm uh, Todd Fine. I'm the president of the Washington Street Advocacy Group. And I wanted to uh, to speak a little bit about uh, the Five World Trade Center project. Uh, a few weeks ago, I, uh, along with some other people, felt that the Community Advisory Committee for the Five World Trade Center was not representative because it didn't include any local organizations or uh, in the immediate area, and it also doesn't include any housing groups, despite affordable housing being one of the main community issues in the CAC. Um, I formally asked the Empire State Development uh, Corporation to expand the Community Advisory Committee, and I haven't heard back from them. And I'm, I'm very concerned about this, and I, I just want to say that I think it's important that uh, Community Board 1 have an open debate and discussion about this, the problems with this CAC and potentially a resolution about what the community's perspective on the current proposed plan for Five World Trade Center is. Thank you. Thank you, Todd, very much. I appreciate that. Um, we are also waiting, which will be in my chair report for information. Okay, um, the last two, I've had some troubles logging in people. Jen, do you see them anywhere if they've managed to come on? 
I don't. Um, apparently they're trying to access um, the meeting, but I guess perhaps because of the software update with WebEx, they had trouble logging on, um, but they did wish to speak, so. Okay. Alrighty. Well, unfortunately, um, I think we are done with the public session then, and we will be closing out. Let's lock down the public session, start the business meeting. I'd ask if you can move some of our board members like Kaylin, who I think is over in the attendee list, make sure that we're all here. And then uh, let's take an adoption of the 2021 minutes. Do I have any, uh, can I get a motion? I'll make a motion. I second. Great. Uh, we'll do it as an affirmation. So if I don't hear any nays or recusals or changes, um, motion passes. Fantastic. Um, we don't have any elected officials who are here with us tonight. So we'll move straight forward into the district manager's report and then chair and the committee reports. Please remember for members of the public, this is the business session of community board one, which means it is not open for public comment. Certainly, if you have your hand up in the uh, attendee section, you can take it down. If for any reason we would need to call on someone, we certainly will. Otherwise, I encourage you to all make sure you have signed in so we know that you are here and click in for our sign up sheet. And with that, Lucian, take it away. Thanks, Tammy. Here I go. Let's bring up my. So uh, today, I. Um, I had the opportunity to meet with uh, Jay and Chris from the uh, uh, September 11th Memorial and Museum. Um, it was a great uh, connecting with them. Uh, it, you know, the pandemic has been hard on the museum and the memorial. Um, we invited them to come and uh, present to Manhattan Community Board one in June. So we'll work on uh, making sure that they go to the appropriate committee and, um, you know, it's. They have a lot to talk about in terms of the 20th anniversary um, commemoration of the attacks, uh, the, the operation of the museum hours uh, programming, uh, some of the funding issues that they've encountered in, uh, as a cause of the pandemic. Um, there's a, a lot to cover there. So, um, we're looking forward to having a longer conversation there. Um, we had some questions come in from our members about access to the plaza. Um, there are French barricades uh, around the plaza. Those will be coming down fully in the month of June. Um, and currently the hours are 10 to 5, but those will be ex extended um, once those barricades come down. Uh, we'll work to try to get those barricades down as fast as possible and then also communicate the new hours. So. Um, that will be another step towards normalcy in lower Manhattan. The museum reopened last year on 9-11 for the family members and on uh, September 12th for all others. It's currently operating at 30% capacity, um, but is you know, without uh, visitors to the city, um, they're, they're well below that. So um, hopefully we'll see more um, people come through um, and then uh, there's commemorations for the uh, rescue workers and the survivor community on May 30th. I'll be sending something out to all the board members about that. Um, it is remote and in person. So we invite members who are comfortable uh, with going to an in-person event to consider going um, because it is for you all. Um, and then um, uh, just make sure that uh, we have a nice discussion about the, the programs and other sorts of funding requests that they're um, that they're uh, seeking uh, from the city to bring school children uh, to the museum. The next uh, item on my report will be about the Department of Transportation. Uh, we had a bit of a scare early in the month uh, for the restaurants with uh, curb lane seating uh, in the areas where there were um, uh, protected bike lane plans that were made before the pandemic. Uh, those curb lane uh, street seating and placements uh, will not be in danger. The lanes will go around them. Um, the DOT's uh, policy is to um, uh, do what they can to to not impact those. 
um, so they're not moved or destroyed for milling and paving. Those were spared for those those streets which were recently milled and paved, and they will also uh, not be uh, affected for this striping of the protected bike lanes. Um, however, in the long term, uh, there will be uh, discussions on how the, the city can make those changes, but uh, we'll make sure that CB1 is involved and the uh, businesses have more than enough time to uh, plan, uh, which is uh, always such a, a tough thing for businesses is having to react. So we don't want them to react. We want them to plan. Um, with that, uh, Tammy, I'll give that over to you. Thank you very much, Lucian. I've got a busy chairperson's report. So welcome to community board one in May. You see some of the things that we've been talking about. Um, many of those photos are taken directly off of presentations or out the window as I'm walking, riding or driving by. Next slide. Okay, since last month, we had our five World Trade Center Abuse Link Council meeting. As you know, they have begun we, there are several lists of asks into them that we are waiting for. We have not heard back from Empire State Development in terms of the asks, which included many about um, transparency, backups, and understanding of how we got here because there's a lot of information we have yet to see and understand to be able to work together to partner to go forward. Okay. We did a DOT walkthrough after the last board meeting a couple of days later with uh, DOT members of the community board members of their construction team and things like that. We we're waiting for some notes and feedback from that. We had a meeting with uh, NY New York City EDC and MOR for the Climate Coalition for Lower Manhattan. The Battery Conservancy had their board meeting, and I'm happy to say that the new Planescape will open summer 2021. And in the meanwhile, um, they have reopened the sea glass carousel as well as um, found a new vendor for the kiosks in the park as well as looking forward to using uh, part of the Tribeca Film Festival in the park. Okay, Downtown Alliance had their board meeting. Um, I hope that you are on their mailing list to see their newsletter that went out about the state of Lower Manhattan. Uh, we have our New York NYPD first precinct community council meeting, a borough board meeting, and a meeting with BMCC about our upcoming June event. Uh, shout out and a thank you to Council Member Chin's office who arranged a uh, initial discussion with PSIS 276 leadership, CUCS, which is leading the shelter on Washington Street, and Community Board One. Um, there was a uh, a borough based jails neighborhood advisory council meeting last night. We are still waiting for information. I have nothing to update and report. I will share out whatever I can, but in terms of the questions that have been asked, we don't have answers back yet. Um, and we've requested many things. This morning, the Manhattan borough president and NYPD put together a business district recovery initiative, which talked was primarily focused from 59th Street South on the rise in crime and homelessness and the effects on the business and how to mitigate and what to do. Basically, your NCOs are the key to making success. And we've sent some letters to the speaker on our position for the Governor's Island zoning ULERP um, and to PDC regarding the South Battery Park resiliency covering theory and the battery. Next slide. Don't forget June 17th. Okay. Looking ahead for the rest of the month, you think the month is over, but no. City Council has a vote on Governor's Island on May 27th. If you have anything to say, certainly participate early and often. NYPD, again, you've heard from Cora. Tommy has his walkout on May 27th. We want to thank him for his years of service and unbelievable responsiveness to the community, um, which will be May 28th. The day before, if you would like to run for the first precinct community council nominations are due. Um, so please make sure if you need information on that, please contact Lucy in our office. And then I think Lucian covered the May 30th event. Yes, Lucian, did we cover that one? Um, 
which will be at 930, which is a commemorative moment on the 9-11 Memorial Glade, which will honor not only members of the lower Manhattan community and those who have passed to 9-11, but also the rescue, recovery, and relief workers, as well as survivors. Um, and it'll also focus on the ongoing 9-11 um, health crisis. All righty. So now, hot topics for June. We have two more citywide zoning text amendments. We have 250 Water Street Euler. The hearing is June 14. We have a Seaport Marketplace Lease Renewal ULERP certification. We'll learn more about that at Land Use this month. And the BPCA has a PDC submission in June with hearings that are coming up in July. We are going to try and set up a meeting, hopefully, with Chair Lago and the Borough President and the CBs regarding our POPs. Um, DCP is our principal gatekeeper. And until we have a public space czar, we really need to ensure that the pops are available as the city recovers and goes forward and are not overtaken by furniture. Um, 240 Granite Street, we are waiting for the FOIL request. It's been pushed back to July. Um, so we'll stay in touch with Diana. Hopefully that'll new um, as soon as we get it. We're waiting for the Manhattan Borough President Office. We're working with her to renew the contract for Laura Dodge, for those who know, for 250 water. And then we're waiting for our notes back from the Advisory Council for Five World Trade, as well as DOT. Okay, LMCR is gonna report in June. So if you wanna know everything about coastal resiliency and what is going on, please go visit Alice in June. Next slide. Next week is Memorial Day. Happy Memorial Day. I thank you to those who have served this great country and, and honor our amazing vets. We have um, also currently serving members on our board. So we want to thank all of them for their service. These are all beautiful, lovely monuments in lower Manhattan. I encourage everyone get out, go visit the monuments, go to the restaurants and enjoy the outdoors. And with that, I close my chair report and let's hit committee reports. All righty. 140 Broadway. I am going to make a motion before I even present this. So I hope everybody's ready. I am going to make a motion that you vote down the resolution. We did the resolution in good faith based on the conversation that we had with the owner's rep who was on the night of the meeting. We subsequently found out from DCP uh, with you saw the way the resolutions worked and what they said that there are no permitted. I'm pulling up my email now so I can read it out so everyone has Diana, can you read it for me? The 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 vending carts are not permitted obstructions in a pops. Right. So because of that, if we approved this resolution, the vendors that we so sought to try and help would actually not be helped because they are not allowed to be on the Liberty Street side and they would be in violation of the rules and the pops. So I'm going to call the question and I'm going to suggest based on the DCP information that came back to us because they do not have the proper documentation ready to be able to do this, that we vote this down. I second it. Yes. Okay, let's call the question. It is our first vote. And again, it would be um, roll call. Lucian, take it away. Tammy, will this be re-agended? <clears throat> not until they have DCP rulings. Okay. Okay. okay, so yeah, you're so just just to be clear, Tammy, that people are opposing the current resolution. Correct. Or they're, okay, so to vote this down, everyone, you're saying opposed and not in favor. Okay. Correct. Okay. Here we go. You're incorrect, Lucian. You're incorrect because she she made a proposal to turn it down, so you have to vote in favor for for her turn for the turn down. I made a suggestion. And 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 Susan seconded. So 
Okay, so wait, I'm sorry, guys. I'm very confused. Okay, just just to, just just so we we do this correctly. Uh, do we have a, a parliamentarian just tell us for for the way the motion yeah. was made, which way it needs to go? There was no motion made. It was um, a request to call the question with the suggestion by Tammy that folks vote in the negative, vote no, or opposed to the resolution. Um, I think uh, Susan's second was to the calling of the question. Yes. Okay. So it there is they're they're opposed if you do not want the resolution of support to pass for Tammy's recommendation. Okay. Correct. Okay. And I'm just gonna go. I'm gonna make it perfectly clear. This is from the Manhattan Office of the Department of City Planning. Food okay. trucks or food carts are not permitted obstructions within the plaza, whether they leave every day or not. Someone cannot make a side deal with ownership to drive in and park a truck on a plaza every other day, which has been a consistent problem for which there always seems to be a few cars parked by the loading dock. Because they are not permitted in the plaza, um, food trucks were historically in the right of way of Broadway and Cedar. Kiosks and cafes could be permitted, but that requires another certification. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so with, that, that, with that, go. With Amoruso. No. Amoruso, no. Burton. Blank. Uh, I'm voting it down. No. Blank. No. Brown Kennedy. No. Brown Kennedy. No. Cameron. Cassell. Cassell. Chang. Chang. Chang votes, Chang votes no. no. Chang votes Chang no. Votes thank, no. You. thank you. Someone has Someone their, microphone, has their on. microphone on. They have to please mute themselves until they're talk until they're ready to talk. Uh, Chapman. Chapman votes no. Chapman votes no. Chapman votes no. Thank you. Charcutian. Charcutian votes no. Charcutian votes no. Thank you. Cole. Cole votes no. Cole votes no. Thank you. Kucha. Okay, I'm so sorry. I have a question. If I vote no, what happens to the street vendors? They've got no place to go. Is that not a... true? That means that we're turning down the right to build the five benches for department. Uh, so they could go back to where they were. Okay, yes. then I'll vote no. Kucha, no. Cunningham. <clears throat> no, Cunningham, no. Cunningham, no. Thank you, Curtis. Curtis, no. Curtis, no. Thank you, Ehrman. Ehrman votes no. Ehrman, no. Thank you, Flynn. Flynn votes no. Flynn votes no. Thank you, Frank Hoare. Frank Hoare abstains. Frank Hoare abstains. Thank you, Friedman. Friedman votes no. Friedman votes no. Thank you, Froman. Froman no. Froman votes no. Thank you. Galloway. Galloway is not present. Goldstein. Goldstein, no. Goldstein votes no, thank you. Gupta. Gupta's no. Gupta votes no, thank you. Jesse, not present. James. James. James, no. Thank you. James, no. Joyce. No. Joyce, no. Joyce votes no. Thank you. K. It's no. I'm sorry, Betty. K no. Okay. K no. Thank you. Canel. Canel no. Canel no. Thank you. Petring. Petring no. Petring no. Thank you. Uh, Coppell. Jennifer, can we make sure that Coppell, Joel is unmuted? Joel, are you there? You may be called in. We're going to come back. Um, Clementus? No. Clementus votes no. Thank you. Lamory? Lamory votes no. Lamory <laughs> votes no. Thank you. Lerner? Lerner votes no. Lerner votes no. Thank you. Lewinson? No. I'm sorry, Lewinson? Mahoney? Mahoney votes no. Mahoney votes no. Thank you. McHugh? McHugh, no. McHugh, no. Thank you. Meltzer? 
Meltzer votes no. Meltzer no, thank you. Milhowski? Well, he, he's okay. My hawk? My hawk votes no. But my hawk no, thank you. Monjovi? No. Monjovi votes no. Moore? Votes no. More votes no. Schneck? Schneck votes no. Schneck votes no, thank you. Star? Star votes no. Star votes no, thank you. Song? Song votes no. Song votes no, thank you. Tedesco? Townley? Weinstock? Stock votes no. Weinstock votes no, thank you. She? G. Zelter. Zelter. Okay, well, the motion carries, the resolution does not pass. Cool. And Andrew is here. Yeah, I guys, I, I, I keep getting dropped every five minutes, so I, I vote no. Okay, thank you. Zelter, no, thank you. Tammy, can I ask you a short question about what we just did? Yep. Okay. And because I'm so happy that you gave us uh, that info from the message that you got, because based on in the public session, I think there was an, the architect and there was somebody from the landlord that basically said that no vendors would be displaced. But that's they basically lied because because of the now the, the rule about Liberty Street, which they didn't bring up. So maybe there's more of a statement that we should really keep it in our in the back of our minds or make a note of that that they totally spun it to a lie when this comes up again mitch you know none of us on the community board being like being lied to and whether they just didn't understand it or not i'm not going to speak for them i am only going to say we did what we need to do as a due diligence of a community board and follow through based on a representation that was made that I, DOT, DCP. I, for, not, for not being diplomatic from on my on my part, they don't get to be in a position of being the landlord of that space by being dumb. So I'm gonna say that they lied because they're not stupid. Uh, you know, Mitch, okay. as as you wish. Thank you. As, all righty. Um, let's move on. I think we can take uh, Comfort Road on Governor's Island and 88 Wall Street together. I'm going to call it as a instead of a rule. No, 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 no. I want to make an amendment to 88 Wall Street. Okay, perfect. So let's do 402 Comfort Road. Yes. Yeah. Can I get a second? Second. To take I'll second. Perfect. Yeah. So. Um, we're going to do, uh, for this one, we're going to do yays and nays, um, because it does seem fairly straightforward for Governor's Island. So, uh, are there any no's? Are there any abstentions? And remember, if you abstain or recuse, you must call your name and then your vote. Are there any abstentions? Hearing no abstentions, any recusals? Okay. Motion passes. Uh, that's 402 Comfort Road. Thank you very much. We'll take 88 Wall Street. And because I uh, hear Susan would like to make uh, an amendment, can you please put the resolution up? I'm sure everyone's read it, but let's just put it up. Just uh, 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 uh. Anyway, uh, uh, I would like just to say very quickly that I have read all the legislation. We had some trouble, just a little background very quickly. There were seven owners to start with. There are now, their ownership has changed. There's something wrong with our doing the legislation on this. And so I just would like, without going into a long harangue, and I have the SLA legislation, and um, uh, in uh, 86 years, there have been 20 of these, and I think one in the city, uh, there's not been any in the city. I mean, we did, uh, 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 so I just want to say that, but I would say rather than supports, I would like to say that community board one has no obje objection to the applicant's uh, application to the LS SLA for a tied home uh, a tight house exemption. I don't want to say support 
because I think it's up to the legislature. They could wait till they're not opening. Uh, there's a lot of process involved in this, and I just want us not to be duped. So that's why I would put has no objection with that I, other. If I said so, hold on. Let me clarify. And remember, stick your hand up if you've got a question on it. Do not just shout out, please. If I understand your suggestion is to change from Manhattan Community Board one supports is has no objection. To the correct? applicants, to the applicants application to the request for the time. Okay. Got it. All right. Now we'll go questions in order of hands that went up. Michael and then Justine. I just want to say quickly that I agree with Susan. So thanks, Susan. You're okay. welcome. And it's a friendly question. amendment that I was uh, I was going to say yes to, so I'm good with that. Uh, Justine, you're next. Was going to say the same thing. I was going to if I thought she was making a motion, I was going to second her motion. That's all. No, it's a friendly amendment. It does not actually change uh, the position of the meeting or anything that happened. I think that it's it is as accurate of a representation as what's on here. So uh, agreed. And with that, let's call the question. Do I hear a second? Second. Fantastic. So we're going to, with Susan's motion included, I'm going to assume. Do we hear any nays? Do I hear any abstentions? Mahoney abstains. Thank you, Mahoney abstain. Do I hear any recusals? Fantastic. With that, the, the motion is passed. Thank you very much, everybody. And let's move on. Oh. Uh, city programs funded by community. Yes, yeah. we did that during executive. I'm going to have Lucian send out information so we don't have to rehash it here. All righty. Next committee landmarks, Mr. Ehrman. Oh, Bruce. Bruce, you're mu you I'm go. So sorry. Uh, sorry. I had stepped away from the computer. I was listening. So, uh, it, by the way, is Jason here? I was at Landmarks. However, because I am in a cast, I could not type at the time. <laughs> so, uh, so I did not write the resolutions this month, but I know what we're doing. First of all, let me, I'm, I'm, I'm scrolling to the resolutions. Give me a second. Uh, where are my resolutions? Just a second. I'm so sorry. I I emailed that I was at an event, but I got here sooner. But there we are. I'm sorry. Okay. So 31 Harrison Street. Uh, it's very simple. It's one of a series of uh, eight 19th century houses that either existed under Independence Plaza on Harrison Street or were moved there during the late 1960s Washington Market Urban Renewal Project, when the houses were either moved or renovated, and at that time they were actually done so by the Landmarks Preservation Commission, which LPC does not do anymore. They don't have a hand in, um, in restoration anymore. LPC put shutters on all of the houses. Uh, in fact, at this juncture, none of the houses have the shutters anymore from the 19 actually by that time it was 1971 uh this house in fact historically from the 1800s never had shutters however when it was designated as a landmark the shutters were part of the building that lpc had put on in the early 70s and they got a violation other houses that had shutters removed the violations were, were over were were expunged by the LPC and we're just doing the same here. That's the story with 31 Harrison Street. Is that clear? Uh, is that clear? Yes. Yeah. Works for me. Okay. Works. It works. Okay. So that's that's the story. I'll take questions. Okay. I'm looking for hands up for anybody who has a question. Call the question. I second that. Nice job, Bruce. Let's roll. Thank you. So uh, we're going to roll the same way, way we did before. 
So are there any abstentions? Are there any recusals? Are there any no's? Hearing none, motion passes unanimously. And the agenda shows 54 Warren Street, and all they, although they showed up, that they were completely ill prepared to make. They didn't even have a document to present, so they're coming back. We we wouldn't hear them. Thank okay. you. Thank you, Bruce, very much. Let's move on to the next one. Um, large venue working group, Miss Mariama James. Hi everyone. Let me close my window so you don't hear all the honking. The bridge is closed and there's a lot going on over here. Um, so yes, we had a, a, a meeting with the large venue working group this month and it was very fruitful. We decided to go ahead and get started with a number of the guidelines with regard to security and sanitation and transportation and have a resolution before you to that effect tonight. Um, if there are no questions, we can go straight to it. Awesome. Let's uh, keep your mic open and let's move you move over to licensing with Susan. Okay. Um, and off we go. Uh, uh, which on uh, just licensing, right? I'm going to licensing. I'm not doing, we're not doing the large venue or we are. Okay. We're going to start we're, licensing I with that. I got it. I got it. Here. Okay. Um, so uh, uh, it's pretty. Uh, straightforward. There is one. I, I made. There's some grammatical changes and some clearing up. Um, the one thing that I uh, there's the I don't know. It's the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, uh, seventh. Whereas we ask for at least sixty days notice, and I think we can't. I think it's thirty days notice because that's what the SLA requires, and we can't. Uh, I don't think we can legally ask for sixty, and we'll have to check on that. We just wanted a little further uh, 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 preparation. We're trying to get these large hey, venues. Hey, Susan, I I thought they changed it to forty five at one point. I can't remember, but you should check. Okay, I, I think we can. We would, uh, the, the longer we have, the better. Um, uh, so I think that um, uh, please um, um, ask any questions. It's pretty straightforward. We're just trying to clean it up so that these streets, certainly in certain parts, and the quiet and what's been happening, we want to make sure that uh, people are accountable to us in this uh, chaotic time. I don't know what else to say. If you've read it, it's pretty self-explanatory. I, you know, in the section of 2021, I think that's going to be the two questions that everybody needs to have done is one, can you hear me now? And two, did you read the resolution? So here we go. Michael Francor's hand is up. Michael, you're first. Yeah, that's a good question. I I was just wanted to get a little more uh, explanation about the 75 person uh, uh, definition that we went with, like what the the reason why uh, we went with 75 and is does that have, are we applying this to any d does venue include like restaurant and bar or is it a specific definition for like an event space that's holding an event at a certain time i think so 75 persons is is from the department of buildings and we considered increasing the number in thinking about large venues and then decided to just go with what's already sort of like a statute we um, would be looking at all kinds of venues, um, including restaurants, if they were to accommodate hundreds of people. Uh, for example, Michael, if I may, Miriama, the hotel that's come before us uh, in Tribeca has a venue for a thousand people to go in there. So. Uh, but each space is different, but the, the, the totality uh, uh, is 1,000 people, but some are at 75, one is at 60, one is at 100. So, and the, the part, I think Miriam explained it very clearly. We just felt that that's what we would do. And we have some discretion here also, Michael. 
Got it. And and so like, just to confirm, does this apply to if a restaurant had 75, you know, seats in it, would it apply to them? Because I, I think the target, our target is a place that has a event that starts at a time because that's when you get everyone that's at the same time, right? Uh, it's not, it's not a typical restaurant, Michael. Okay. okay. Because Perfect. maybe, uh, and maybe we can, uh, if uh, we can clarify it somehow, I don't, you know, to make it better in some way. Uh, let, uh, uh, let me think about that. I don't know how we do it, but I think there is, perhaps there's a way. Gotcha. Yeah. Cause, so my only concern about this is when we have these like big hotels or Howard Hughes coming before us, like, I don't mind putting uh, these asks in front of them. Like, hey, we want a traffic study. We want this because they can afford it. Right. And usually they're working on a scale that it does make sense that we can ask them for this. But I want to make sure we're not no. while we're trying to get those things. We're not adding too much of a burden to like a smaller mom and pop or an entrepreneur, no, no, especially. No. You know that. who we are. Yeah. You, know, you know what we're after. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Thanks, Susan. Mark. Yeah. Thank you, Mark. Mark, and then Colin, and then Betty. I'm sorry. Yes, we, we spoke about this a, a little bit uh, that we wanted to just um, add this or augment this with regards to the music, um, and that we make a distinction. And maybe Mitch can work with Jen on on the technical language on it, but that there's a distinction and noise and vibrations between loud music and bass. And that we just need to be clearer on that, uh, wherever it is in the resolution, I can't, I can't remember. It's exactly. like the seventh whereas. I yeah. think so, can, so that, that, that could be uh, either as a separate whereas just underneath or just made it's much right there. clearer. Yeah, well, we can clean yeah. it, we can, yeah. we can make yeah. it. Yeah. A, sometimes you can have loud music and it's not the end of the world thing. But when you have that bass going with the vibrations and yeah. it, it, it's bad. Okay. okay. Thanks. So that's an amendment. Okay. okay. Thank you, Mark. Colin, you're next. And then Betty. Yeah, I'm I'm saying this fully realizing I'm going upstream here. And I think there's certainly more on this community board that are against large venues that are that are for it. But I'm really proud of this, but I do take some issue with how this is worded, especially the first whereas. CB1 has historically discouraged the granting of liquor licenses for applications to large venues. Is that something we've voted on? Is that something that we have agreed to as a community board? Because that sounds like a, a position that the community board has taken that I'm not sure we voted on, if that makes sense. And as small business uh, chair, uh, you know, look, there's nothing I can really pick apart about this because it's it's not really saying anything. But I just want to be very careful that we're actually not making it harder for businesses to operate and to achieve licenses. But I'm just saying this more for the record. I'm not sure I'm actually going to accomplish anything with this. But I do specifically object to the first whereas, which seems to be taking a position on behalf of the community board that we haven't voted on. Uh, Colin, I think it was taken. At, if I understand correctly, if you're looking at it, it's been taken from every large venue that's come before us in the last uh three years at least right. Wait, do, we, do we have an official position on how we feel about liquor licenses for large venues have we voted on that as a board you don't vote as a board as a global that way you you look at the individual large venues that have come to us even we also have to strike the first day so it was, and it's up to susan to look at it you can say has historically voted against the granting of because that is accurate if that I is to do that i mean i'm perfectly happy to do that has has historic historically voted against the granting of liquor licenses for applications with large venues that is correct colin yeah it may be correct but i just don't think it's appropriate for this piece of legislation it just you're making a statement on behalf of the community board and on behalf of the community that might or might not be true or representative of the community but Anyways, like I said, this is an uphill battle. I know I'm not going to win it, but well, I'm willing to change. I think Tammy's point was well taken, and uh, I think has historically voted against the granting of liquor license. That's accurate. I'm perfectly the, happy with point? that. What's the point of mentioning it here? It's irrelevant to the point. I don't think it is. The point is different kinds of application statuses for large venues. It's not a statement on whether or not we support large venues. 
Well, I, I would, you know, people can vote for or against. This is, I'm willing to change that because that is the truth. Uh, I can hear what you're saying, um, but we have uh, historically not granted uh, uh, license for applications so, for use. And Jimmy, I would like to make an unfriendly amendment, a motion for an unfriendly amendment to remove the first whereas. Well, I'm not going to second it, so there. I'd love to get a second for somebody. I second it. Oh, I second it. it. My hawk seconds that. Okay, so then we'll have to take a vote on this. And then we'll Sorry, come guys. the other hands up. Um, had you not made the motion, I would have made another idea on how to solve that. But, okay. So now we've got to do a, a call on that. So this is a motion to remove the first whereas. I have my hands up, Tammy. Can I make a comment on that before we vote? Well, you can't because the motion was made. It was seconded. We have to take a vote. Okay. Sorry. Sorry, guys. Just how I feel. Okay, Lucian, you ready? Wait, one second for clarity. Was the friendly amendment accepted though? It was, right? Susan accepted that friendly amendment, your 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 suggestion, Tammy? It's null and void because uh Colin made the motion, which was second in, to remove the whereas in its entirety. No matter what but, but would we now be voting to either remove the whereas or to leave it there with the friendly amendment? No. no. No, okay. you, no. Timmy, do you want to take this as a roll call? Can I, yes. can I suggest for speed's sake that we just use the participant place where our hands are up and everyone puts their hand down and then uses their hand up to vote in favor no. or against? No. So we're going to go. We're going to go. Why can't we do that? It's, it'll speed things up tremendously. Everyone's listed right now. But you can't see it. It's not called into the record. So on a roll, that's why for stuff like this, unfortunately, um, it's not quite as simple. So. Oh. Uh, let's so we can do yays, nays, abstains, and recusals. All right. Yep, that works. Okay. <sighs> All right. So if you are agreeing with the motion to remove the whereas, you don't have to say anything. Okay, that will be in a If you are against it, you say your last name and the word no. Say, so I'm going to go for no's now and then abstentions and then recusals. Okay. No. Cole, no. Cuchia, no. Lamarie, no. Amaruso, no. McHugh, no. Moore, no. Schneck, no. no. That's Schneck and Lewinson are both no's. Okay, next. No. Learn or no. Learner, no. Z, no. Gupta, no. Z, no. Gupta, I hear you. Gupta was on. I heard you. Gupta was on Z, I think, Sammy, was also Sammy, this is this is this is very difficult to track. Let's do a roll call, guys. Yeah, I just do a, I'm going to make, gonna make it a very. Call. I think Hold I on. do a really fast roll call, Tammy. Um, All right, fine. Go for it. I'm sorry, this is yeah, no. this is really hard for us to track. That's Real. Um, can, can you just please say if we vote no, that, that we want to keep it, Tammy? Correct. Thank you. Okay, here we go. Emruso. No. Okay. Blank. No. Yeah, Ron Kennedy. No. Cameron. Cameron. Come back to work. Keep going. Chang. Stains. Or go one more time. Abstains. Abstains. Uh, Chapman. No. Chapman says Agudian. no. That's our Korean now. Kuchia. Kuchia says no. Thank you. Uh, Cole. Cole says no. Thank you. <laughs> Cunningham. Abstained. Thank you. Curtis. <laughs> Curtis. Abstained. Thank you. Herman. Abstained. Lynn. Lynn, yes. Rancor. Rancor is a yes. Cassell? Cassell was a, a no. 
Oh, SL is a no. Okay. Friedman. Friedman is a no. Roman. Roman is a no. Goldstein. Epstein. Epstein. Gupta. No. James. Sorry, Emma. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, no. I was waiting for Joyce. Jesse. <laughs> sorry. He's not here. I'm going to skip him. Joyce. What? Trisha Joyce. Joyce abstains. Abstain. Okay. Okay. Sorry, K, yes. Janelle. Janelle, no. Janelle, no. Kettering. No. Kettering, no. Kettering, no. Cabell. Maybe. No. No. Said no. Thank you. Everyone, please mute yourself. Clementis. Clementis abstain. Clementis abstain. Lamory. Lamory, no. Lamory, no. Lerner. Lerner, no. Lerner, no. Mahoney. Mahoney, yes. Mahoney, Can you skip yes. me? Lewinson. Oh, Lewinson. I'm a no. Okay, no. Thank you. Thank you, no. Sir. Not sir, no. Mahalski. He's not here. My hawk. My hawk's a yes. Bon Jovi. No. More. More, no. Schneck. Schneck votes no. Thor. Laura Star. Sung. No. Sung votes no. Kelly Tedesco, Robert Townley, Brittany Wade, Weinstock. Weinstock, no. What no? All right. She? Zelter. No. Zelter's yes. G's here? No? G's no. Okay. Zelter, yes. Got it. Okay. The motion fails. Okay, so we're back to the. Yeah. Sorry, what do you want to say, hey, Tammy? I'm sorry to interrupt you. Was Elizabeth Lewis in here all the time? Because she hasn't been counted for her. Vote. Yes, she's been here since the start. Has someone get her vote to the previous one? Yes. I'm pretty sure. She called. She called out for a vote for the. For yeah, the first thing she did. Okay. I think that so, was a lot of background noise. Tammy. I think that was yes for that. Yeah. All right. So everybody, let's quiet back down. So Betty, uh, pardon me. Um, Betty was next, and then I'm not sure who else's hands were up after that. So if you've already had your thing answered, please take your hand down. Um, Betty, I know has not spoken, so we're going to go Betty, Joe Lerner, Jeff, and then we'll see who's who's. I next. had my hand up after that, Tammy. You've already spoken once, Mitch, so we're going to let yes, everybody. No, no, not on this. No, you told me not to talk about this before the vote. Ah, gotcha. So you can go after that. Yes, Thank you, Mitch. sure. Betty? Can you scroll down to therefore the first therefore be resolved? Yes, please. Thank you. Diana, I know there's a slight lag. Thank you. Uh, what I want to refer to is it talks about at the last sentence, these new guidelines will be posted. The guidelines aren't really spelt out, and that's my main concern. If you look at these various whereases, yes, they do say things, but they say multiple things in each one. I think they really need to spell out exactly what they want to add because it's very unclear from this document. And so to vote for it, I have to tell you, I it looks like a tremendous increase in onus on everyone who ever wants to open one. It needs to be clear so people know what they're voting for. Thank okay. you. 
Thank you. Uh, who did I say was next? Mitch, I guess we're going to go and then Jeff and then Michael. Then okay, I mean, and now it's kind of like a moot point, but I just wanted to point out one thing in that the thing, the, the first uh, whereas that we just voted on. Mm -hmm. Everybody was forgetting about what comes at towards the end of that, where, because what Susan said it was exactly true. We're not when we're not saying we've historically discouraged it completely. Mm -hmm. com look, 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 because uh, normally I might agree with Colin, but look at towards the end of that. It says well, in areas with densely populated residences, and that's the sticking point that that I think that that uh, Susan was trying to make. It was that in densely populated residences, we have historically discouraged the granting, and and uh, you know that was kind of left out in the in the beginning discussion. Thank you, so, Mitch. I hear your comment. Are you making a friendly amendment or a no, suggestion to solve no, it? Uh, I it was a moot point, but I just wanted to uh, for for a clarification that it was it was for the densely populated residences, which nobody spoke about before. So uh, I'm done. Um, I actually, Susan, are you comfortable yeah. in uh, instead of having the first paragraph be more nebulous? Can we define it um, to add some of the applications that we were unsupportive of as samples to give people an idea of scope and size that we had passed resolutions prior? I'm not sure what you're asking. You want us to put in the specific places? Yep. So, you know, places that we've turned down due to highly dense areas and large venues. Which would include Live Nation, would include. Which is um, coming up uh, tomorrow, I think, to the SLA. Um, uh, I don't, uh, you know, I don't have any trouble with any of this, and I don't have trouble with what Betty said. I mean, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not, uh, 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 I think we, the, the concern around all of this is that we were getting waylaid and uh, getting pushed to such an extreme on the sports venues, uh, and this was a response to it. So I don't, I don't have any uh, uh, vested interest in, st except that we want to take, uh, uh, we want to take a stand. We don't have this shoved down our throats. Okay. So I don't mind putting it in. Uh, we'll just have to look and make some statements of what they were. We have, we have them on record for the office. Yeah, yeah. Jeff Myhawk, Michael Francoeur, and Mark Camarusa. Yeah, uh, I just wanted to uh, kind of double down what Colin was saying. I think it's not appropriate for us to have whereas is in any resolutions that talk about what we generally do and don't do if we haven't made a policy on it. So I'd suggest a very strongly a friendly amendment to say historically or rather uh, um, generally speaking, the granting liquor license for applications it should be generally or has historically, but should not be that we don't like it, there's no policy here. So we shouldn't be writing it as though it's a policy of the board when we haven't voted on it. I'm just doubling down on that. So, Jeff, did you hear my my suggestion as a change to put examples in for ones that were controversial? In yeah, I heard that. Okay. I mean, I think it's more important just to have the language say that generally we voted against them. And if you want to put the examples after where you could, but like, I'm just saying, I think the, the larger issue that I think Colin's raising is we shouldn't be writing things as whereas is there are not, you know, policies. We're not making policy in our whereas is we're just offering perspectives on unique moments. Well said. Okay. Michael Francoeur. Yeah, uh, so my question is, I know it's important for us uh, not to have made decisions about applicants before we hear them. And I wonder if, do we think the way that this is currently written, does this open us up to claims of premeditated bias against, uh, uh, like, a, a, is there any, I, I'm not, I'm not like a legal expert or an expert on these community board things. I just know I've heard that before. So I, I would kind of agree with Colin and Jeff and saying that we should try to be neutral in the way that we talk about any applicants coming before us, if that is a valid concern, and I'm not sure that it is, just wanted to raise it. Uh, I'm, I'm floored by all of this. 
So I, I just, I, and I don't know how to proceed because the real issue for the people who are concerned about this is that these large venues on these crowded streets and these places where people live uh, uh, cause a great deal of difficulty. And nobody, uh, 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 we have allowed a number of things to happen over the years, but this has been going on uh, 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 since I've been on the community board and even before that around large venues. So I don't, I'm, I'm, I, I don't, I don't want it to be uh, voted down, Tammy. So do we take it away and redo it? I mean, I don't know what to do anymore. So I'm we just, just put it. All right, hold I'm, on. I'm, Okay, Susan, I hear you. Let's get through all, all of the others before we go back. Um, if that is a that is an option that you have, if you want to table this, bring it back to committee, redefine it for next month, and bring it back with very specific. So, um, I that. so if that's something that I think we can, my parliamentarian, it's we would not rescind it, but you table it for or hold it over for next month, correct? We could do that. Yeah. So why don't why don't we do this? Why don't we motion to table? I I would like I mean, people still have their hands up to speak. All uh, right. Well, let them, uh, you need to let them speak until you. You, before you table. All right, fine. That was, that was the question that Susan asked Mark is what to do with it. So I'm giving her options. If there's no motion made yet, then we keep going. Okay. So Justine, Justine Judith, Jeff's vote, Mark. Okay, Justine. thank you. I, I guess I am on the same page as um, Susan. We have been historically upset with large venues that come in because we're concerned about the traffic, we're concerned about the noise and the high density areas. And we're not a place, no place in Community Ward 1 is there a really okay or acceptable place for a large venue to be placed. That doesn't mean we say no outright, and that's not what this is saying. But historically, we have discour discouraged it because we'd like them to go someplace else because the de density here, I mean, but what shocks me is the people who are for congestion pricing are, are for large venues. It's just bringing people into the area. And in terms of co what Colin was saying, in terms of, um, you know, being concerned with the small mom and pop shops, this is not a small mom and pop shop we're talking about. These are large corporations that are coming in to set stuff up. So I, I would be, I mean, obviously we'll go with whatever it says, but I don't see the point in changing anything. I think historically, discouraged is okay. sensible. I, of course, if you want to water it down, I support that too. But I think it's an important, I think it's an important um, resolution and it should be moved forward on and approved, of course, but thank you. Okay, Judith. I have to agree with Justine. I mean, I was gonna say, we're hearing from the folks that don't support this. Um, it's not clear to me who does support it. I certainly support this resolution for the reasons that Justine outlined. You know, we have a lot of congestion downtown, um, and I think we need a framework. And, and I think that's what this resolution is about. It's a framework for, for evaluating these large menus, and I, I'm, I support it. Okay. Thank you very much, Judith. That brings me to anybody else who has not yet spoken. Patrick. Yeah, I too wholeheartedly support this for a number of reasons. One, I mean, this, the venue working group has been putting in a lot of time on, on these issues and has studied these issues. I've been on the community board for a number of years. It's been a recurring problem um, even before we formed, and it is the very reason we formed a large venue working group to, to, to sort of deal with this in a district-wide sort of way. And I think this is a really thoughtful way of doing it. You know, it's no different than our licensing committee posting guidelines on, you know, certain issues and having signed stipulations from applicants, for example. Every single applicant is treated fairly and the same. They may not like the, you know, the, the regulations or the, the guidelines that we're putting out and they're free to seek exceptions to them, but everyone's treated fairly and the same. So I don't think that's really an issue for us in terms of prejudging any particular application or showing any bias on anybody. And again, I think this is a long time in the coming, so I fully support it. All right. Oh, sorry. 
That's <laughs> all right. I'm good, Susan. You can roll along. So, I have. Uh, well, is everybody been called up. on? There's Mariama and a few others. I'll keep. Mariama and Pat have not spoken up yet at all. Okay. Judith, if you're done, put your hand down, please. And neither did Mark, right? I think he was after. Justine, I got it. Well, I, I agree with, with uh, Patrick, Justine, and uh, Judith, but I wanted to add that as part of our meetings and our presentation and, and discussions, I actually showed a PowerPoint that demonstrated where large venues are located otherwise all over the city. None of them are in neighborhoods like any of ours. That was my point of doing it. I, I and it, and it was a, a neutral, um, you know, third party. I didn't create the the list of large venues. I got it from online. I shared the link so everyone else could find it. Um, and we went over one by one all the different types of venues that they were, and where they were located. And they were all located in areas with wide, broad, you know, streets, uh, not narrow streets with it only with only one lane that are made out of cobblestone. Um, where they're, you know, some of the most densely populated neighborhoods in the city. And so I think that Mitch's point is very important. Um, whereas the whereas very clearly states that we're specifically talking about these such neighborhoods. We're not saying in general we're against any type of business. And I think it's also um, important to consider the fact that this is a working group, and that means that anybody and everybody is allowed to be be a member, um, you know, if they're eligible based on their um, relation to the district. And there are lawyers that are members of the working group, lawyers that um, represent these companies that that make the applications. And so I think that if we had done something that was harmful or hurtful, um, they certainly would have pointed it out. That's my opinion. Thanks. I support it obviously. Thank you. Thank you very much. Pat Moore, you haven't said anything, I don't think, did you? No, <laughs> and the thing, the reason why we, we are even talking about these large venues is because they affect the quality of life of people who live in this community. And as we all know, when you have a large venue, as we're talking of the type that we're trying to describe, it truly does affect the quality of life of people. And everybody on this board lives in this community. And you know that this community has changed over the years where we have many more residents and we have to start to think about what kind of life we wanna live here. Okay. So we're gonna call on Mark and then Colin. Mark and then Colin, and then I am heads up going to call the question. I made a friendly I amendment, did. which Susan still has to accept in terms of changing historically discouraged to discourage uh, applications da -da 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 in areas densely, such as. Okay. All right. So, uh, but, uh, factually, the first whereas is correct. And for for you that have been on the board uh, as long as I have, you remember the good old days when the state liquor authority considered the public interest the fact that an establishment was paying taxes, and that oversaturation and quality of life uh, were not considered uh, public interest uh, uh, issues. Uh, so, with that being said, since back then in the early '90s, we have been opposed to these large venues. Uh, back then. Uh, most of these Wester Hall type uh, uh, promoters would come down and think nobody lived here. In fact, I overheard several of them say that when they were walking around looking in uh, in Tribeca. So uh, there, there, there's a simple way to fix this. We can uh, not change the first sentence, but also add, like Tammy says, uh, venues such as Tribeca Rooftop, which was one of the historically first big fights that we had for big venues, and and other ones that you want to list. And the way to fix this is just to simply say uh, the very first sentence should be, whereas Community Board 1 takes each application on a case-by-case -case basis, however, CB1 has historically discouraged da 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 For example, Tribeca Rooftop. I accept that, it. That one. I like I it. it. And we're covered. Can I, I accept, accept it? what he's saying? Love it. I like it, Mark. I second what Mark's friendly amendment is. I like that one. Yeah, me too. Okay. I accept it. Can I right. just accept it? 
Perfect. Yes, you can. So, Mark, are you good? You done? Yeah, okay, sounds good. Good. yeah let's go with that. And I think uh, it should satisfy sure. most people and cover us. Awesome. Pat, you got to put your hand down unless you got something else to say. We're going back to Colin. Colin. Yeah, just, I mean, I, there's so many things I want to respond to, but I'll just save everyone the time and not. But the one thing I do want to respond to, two things, quick things, is Justine, residual economic impact of a large business always has an impact on small business. That's one. Two, I'm sorry, I've apparently lost on this, but we are making a statement of how we feel without voting on that as a full board. And this says we as community board one are against large venues, but hey, apply if you want to. If you want to be against large venues as a community board, propose that resolution, vote on it. Otherwise, you're not going to get my That's not what it says. I disagree with you, Colin. It always it's says okay. that. It's it the high business. It's unfriendly to business. And that's the right thing. I am making a motion to end debate. Okay. And call the question. Second. Can I second the motion? Mark already did. So call the question. All right. Lucian, do you feel that this will need a roll call? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Let's let's rock and roll. I think it's gonna be like three of us. <laughs> All right, rock and roll call. Here we go. We're gonna do the speed round style. Can I clarify that the friendly amendment is in there for the first whereas? Is that in there if I want to go Yes, around? it is. Yes. Thank you, Susan. You're very welcome. Okay, well, I'm gonna do the roll call first. I'm gonna say good night to my son. I just want you to know when we go back in person, I'm gonna have a pile of candy in the front and I'm just gonna throw it at people. <laughs> okay, good. Here we go. Amaruso. Yes, as amended. The motion as amended, yes. Uh, blank. Uh, I, I frankly lost touch. Uh, touch I, I'll go with whatever Susan is, uh, can, the yes. committee is considering. I don't even yes. remember at this point. I'm a little lost. So, yes, I guess. Brown Kennedy. Brown Kennedy, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Cameron. Cameron. <laughs> Vicky, Vicky, verbally. verbally. Okay. okay, I'm gonna move on. Vicky, let me know. Chang or Cassell? Sorry, 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 sir. Cassell, yes. Cassell, yes. Thank you. All right, all right. Chang. Chang abstains. Abstains. Thank, Thank you. Chapman. Chapman. Chapman, yes. Chapman, yes. Chapman, yes. Someone, please turn your microphone off. Thank you. Charcutian. Charcutian votes yes. Thank you. Paul. Yes. Thank you. Kucha. Uh, yes, please. Thank you. Cunningham. Cunningham votes yes. Thank you. Curtis. Francis. Curtis votes yes. Thank you. Herman. Herman votes yes. Thank you. Lynn. Lynn abstains. Thank you. Francoeur. Uh, Francoeur also abstains. Thank you. Friedman. Is yes. Friedman, yes. Thank you. Roman. Roman, yes. Roman, yes. Thank you. Goldstein. Goldstein, yes. Goldstein, yes. Thank you. Gupta. Gupta votes yes. Thank you. James. James, yes. Thank you. Joyce. Joyce, yes. Joyce, yes. Thank you. Kay. Abstain. Hey, abstain. Thank you. Canel. Canel, yes. Canel, yes. Thank you. Kettering. Kettering, yes. Yes. Thank you. Coppell. Coppell, yes. Coppell, yes. Thank you. Clementis. Abstain. Clementis abstains. Thank you. L Lamory. Lamory, yes. Lamory, yes. Thank you. Lerner. Lerner, yes. Lerner, yes. Thank you. Lewinson. Lewinson, yes. Lewinson, yes. Thank you. Mahoney. Mahoney, no. Mahoney, no. Thank you. McHugh. McHugh, yes. McHugh, yes. <laughs> Sorry. Thank you. Meltzer. Meltzer, yes. And thank you for the hard work that this group has done. My hawk. My hawk, yes. My hawk, yes. Thank you. Bon Jovi. Yes. Bon Jovi, yes. Thank you. More. More, yes. More, yes. Thank you. Schneck. Schneck votes yes as amended. What's a, yes as amended? Thank you. Star. 
for everyone for your vote to count. You must unmute and give verbal vote. Doesn't count. There's no texting. There's no emailing. Got to say it. Or song. Yes. Song vote. Yes. One stock. One stock. Yes. One stock. Yes. She. she. Yes. She, yes. Zelter. Zelter, no. Zelter, no. The motion carries. All right. Um, I have a, 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 the rest of the, mo the rest of the uh, liquor licenses, but I would like to respond uh, to the people at um, uh, 124 uh, Chambers, which was, if all of you could remember, the Italian restaurant Echo. And that's what Poseidon is taking over. And my understanding was that we gave them the hours of, uh, were the hours of what Echo had, although Echo may have closed early uh, for them. But it is uh, one o'clock on uh, Fridays and Saturdays, or maybe it's 2 a.m. I want to make sure I'm giving you this right. It's 2 a.m. Friday and uh, Saturdays and uh, 1 a.m. closing um, uh, Sunday through Thursday. Um, so unless somebody wants to propose something else, uh, 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 it's going to be a fish restaurant. It will have a bar, but uh, um, it's supposed to be high end. Uh, we, we talk to the people. Unless somebody else on the committee wants to propose something uh, or anybody else, um, I would, um, I'd like to respond to the community, but it's the same hours as they had before. I would imagine that this place will stay open with the hours we have approved if they have the business, but we have no idea. So they're not going to have music. They're not going to have certain things. It's a restaurant. So I, uh, I just wanted to bring that up. So uh, I would like to say something, please. Um, I think 2 a.m. Uh, it's too late. Nothing good happens at 2 a.m. I don't care who you are, what you are, or whatever. Nothing good happens at 2 a.m. So uh, I think 2 a.m. is too liberal. Well, uh, listen, uh, Joe, I don't, uh, I don't disagree necessarily. Um, if somebody wants to propose something, I'm, I'm struck that if two people came. Uh, uh, they did not come to our committee meeting, but I, they live there. So. Are, is Joe making a proposal? That's the question. Yes. Joe, what is your proposal? Okay, my proposal is uh, to 1 a.m. like the other day, like Friday or whatever. 1 a.m. seven days a week or 1 a.m. on the weekend? We weekends, weekends. Well, it's seven days a week because we've given them 1 a.m., Tammy. Okay, I won't fight you. Okay, seven. Thank you, Joe. But uh, 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 could we ask the, the Mark and then Justine and Colin to speak? Absolutely. I mean, before you decide to accept that, I'm good with that if Joe's okay with it. Justine, thank you, Joe. Justine and Mark. So, just a quick question, Susan, so I understand it. So, when the people, when when the place presented, nobody came to your committee to object, but those two people showed up on our call today to say that they had issues, and they said two a.m. was going to be too late. So, with Joe's suggested change which has been accepted what does it say now it, it's open seven days a week till 1 p.m and when does music stop yeah. or is there ever never any music well there it's inside it's not oh. outside it's quiet it's whatever it is it's a restaurant it's okay. not all right that, i mean it's just closing it on the weekends uh, i mean uh, 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 if I, we accept that, I, I, Mark is on my committee, and then let's hear from Andrew yeah, too. Yeah, that makes sense. But yeah, okay. Thank you for the yeah. clarification. So, so uh, yeah, Joe got the, the part the one a.m. But we should also note that uh, residents did come and speak about it. Long time residents came and speak about it. Spoke about it. Number but, one yeah. and number two that the previous establishment was uh was a long time previous establishment was uh was very innocuous and and that that concerned uh and they closed at midnight i think they said right 
So the previous yeah. cycle was at midnight. So this is a change in method operation that that um, that could be concerned. Well, the president. One on the weekend, I think, Mark. I think yeah. they did because they had a bar uh, echo, and I remember being there late a couple of times. But I'm I'm perfectly happy to to make those little amendment. You know, it's two little things. So it justifies our changing from two to one. And that the based on uh, uh, the a long time residents concern, I think yeah. that's fine. All right, let's go to Andrew. Yeah. Andrew. Mr. Zelter. Yeah, sorry, I was trying to get off mute. Um, I, I just want to clarify, Susan, did you say that what's in the resolution is what Echo had while they were operating there? I believe so, but I will tell you, Andrew, I have to double check. I'm not sure it was till 2 a.m. I don't know for a fact, so I don't want to misrepresent. We would have to see and go back and look. Um, but uh, um, it was a very, this is going to be a different kind of restaurant. It's going to be a little hipper crowd. And, you know, Echo was an old time place, an old time Italian place. But I, I, I think that, listen, at least renewal, they did two years. If it's good, they can come back and ask. You know, there are lots of options. I don't mind, uh, I don't think the hour is going to diminish their business. Business. I don't in, in terms of Collins, you know, really trying to make sure that they're successful, but I want to respond to the, the, the people who live there as well. Yeah, the only reason I ask is, is how we would justify cutting back the hours if, in fact, the, the preceding operation did have up to 2 a.m. Well, you can do that if it's a different operation, but I will tell you what we'll do. We'll go back and look. And uh, 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 we, uh, if I'm not mistaken, we can change it. I mean, that is, you can, uh, if it's a new, if it's a new venue, you don't have to give the same. I, I, I like feel like I have Jeff on my shoulder, but I know that you can change it. You can change it. They can always come back. This is not a, an end all and be all. They can come back, and if they're fantastic neighbors and good operators, they can always be extended later. Michael right. Francoeur, and then I'm going to make a motion. Hey, sorry, and I don't mean to to jump on, <laughs> jump on uh, your back, Susan, about this. So I apologize. Uh, don't that worry my, about it. <laughs> my concern is if most small businesses. What do they they make it like a year or most close after a year? So I understand the concerns, but I also worry that we're setting back the hours we had agreed to give them based on the assumption that they might be bad actors and we're not giving them the opportunity to prove that they are good actors but i understand why we do that because i know we have problems with sla enforcement oh yeah but yeah so i totally understand why we do that i just i just want to raise that would you would, would, would you say we want to we want to review it in six months but, but can, can i say something here yeah, you, yeah. You, you mean to tell me someone's going to walk in at 1.30 a.m. and order a uh, uh, fish dinner? No. I don't want it. No, no. I think it's the, bar, it's the bar, Joe. It's uh, I understand. Wait, 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 bar. I understand. I it. And, and nothing good happens at 2 a.m. Because first, if they, if they ha close at 2, then they start cleaning up. So they'll be leaving at 3. Well, I, I, all right, so let's leave it at the one as it is, and maybe we put in there that we will review it within the year. Okay. Let's see how they are, but I do want, I do feel that we have an so, observation. What? Hands up. Let's call the question with that. Okay. Note. Call the question. I second it. Okay, with that note, we're gonna go. Oh, Francis, your hands up too late. No, just a quick question. What time? I mean, uh, Mudville. What time did the other the other places close on? There's two other places there. What time did they close? I believe they close later, Francis. I would. I think uh, Mudville's grandfather has been there since seventy two. That's not a fair this analogy. This place has been there. You know, it's just. Well, it's a new. It's a new I have called the question. We're done. Okay. I've called the question. We're done. No offense. I'm so sorry. 
Um, keep it at one. So let's keep going. If you are not a yay, you are saying nay with a one o'clock adjustment and your name. So all no's. Mahoney is a no. Curtis is a no. There's a no. You know you're voting down the liquor. You're voting down their license entirely. Which is entirely. I, thought it was, I don't want the, you know, I don't want them to be restricted to one o'clock. I agree. It's, it's just it's a trap. To understand something. You, if you vote no, uh, 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 you, uh, I just don't know how to resolve this other than to say we'll review it in six months. Uh, they can come back. Uh, but I, I do want to, uh, uh, if you vote no, then there is no, the SLA could give them till four o'clock in the morning, for Christ's sakes. Exactly. All right. So, again, those who have voted, you have voted. So, are there any other no's? Are there any abstentions? Are there any recusals? Motion passes. Yeah. We'll review it in six months, we'll tell them that. And the rest of them we need to vote on. So look in your- Together? Uh, yeah, all of them can be taken together. That's what I like, my girl. Okay. So, again, uh, this is for 451 Washington, 139 Dwayne. And, and, all right, does anybody have any comments, questions on, on any of the other resolutions in licensing? Well, it's a bunch of them, they're in there. 96 South I Street. I do. What? Um, 451 Washington Street, Susan, um, your seventh, whereas it's a little unclear, the establishment is a 4,900 square foot club with a public assembly capacity of, of 162 persons and a 4,900 square foot ground floor with one table and 10 seats at the table, as well as a 12 counter seats. I'm not sure I understand the count there. I just would review that. It doesn't sound quite right that there'd be one table. With I'll 10. go over it with Jen. But the, more significantly, this is a private club at 451 right. Washington Street. So this, right. is, this is charging $250 right. a, a, a month to take over a close to 5,000 square foot ground floor space in the neighborhood. I just want to point that out, a private members club. So um, I don't know if we're voting on it, but I will vote a resounding no on that application. Okay, so you can vote no on that one and vote yes on all the others. Anybody else have any yeah. uh, questions on the packet from the licensing committee? Awesome. So taking them together, Lucian, are you ready? Yeah, yeah, sorry, hard to get to the mute button. Um, yes, we're ready. All right, so are there any no's? If you say no, for example, uh, Miss Blank, you would say blank votes no and what address you're voting no on. All right, are there any no's? Blank votes no on 451 Washington Street. Emma Russo votes no 451 Washington. Are there any other no's? Cunningham votes no on 451 Washington. Any others? Brown Kennedy votes First, no on Washington Street. Lerner votes no on Washington Street. Okay, gotcha. Brown Kennedy, were you no on Washington Street as well? Yeah, I was no. Okay, gotcha. Anybody else? Meltzer abstains on 451 Washington. Are there any other abstentions? Curtis abstains on 451 Washington. Okay. Are there Jack any abstains on 451 Washington? Thank Chang you. abstains on Airman. 451 Washington. Airman abstains on 451 Washington Street. Okay. Are there any recusals? All right. Thank you very much. Thank you, Susan. Thank you to the large venue working group. I know it's a tough, tough uh, thing, but it's another tackle you've done.
Um, Paul, I'm going to ask you to go um, as quick as you can because it's 826 and we still have a couple more committees after you. Hit it. Happy to try to go quickly. Could we move the slides up? Yeah. So that we start seeing heritage trails. All right. As some of you recall, uh, this was an issue last month. Uh, Downtown Alliance had come with a proposal to replace in kind many of the trail markers that are shown here that are in lower Manhattan. They were doing this in partnership and largely at the direction of the Department of Transportation who uh, wanted those signs that haven't been really uh, maintained properly uh, repaired because a lot of them have fallen into disrepair. At last month's meeting, we were not really very happy with the proposal. We had a lot of concerns about it that we raised with them in committee. The Downtown Alliance subsequently at the full board meeting came forward with an offer to modify their proposal in response to a number of our concerns. As a result of that, we tabled it and brought it back to committee. So let's go to the next slide, please. Okay, so here were some of the conditions that we put in last month in our resolution. Um, codes and historians, term Lower Manhattan rather than downtown, making the logo smaller, um, other things that you could read there. Keep going, please. Okay, so here are the ones that they've agreed to do that we asked for. Use of Lower Manhattan instead of downtown. Next. Minimize the size of the logo, which is at the lower right corner. Uh, uh, it's, it is smaller. Next. Uh, more images, et cetera. They agreed to that. Next. Uh, QR codes will apparently be put in by the end of the year, according to what they're telling us. Uh, we What's a QR on. code? That's something that you uh, hold up your phone to and you please. gather lots of information. Oh. Justine, when you have a question, please raise your hand and be courteous so everyone goes in order. Okay, sorry. Sorry, but thanks for answering her. Keep going, Paul. Next. Just for your information, they're also updating their wayfinding plaques, most of which are on Broadway. Next. And finally, a few other types of signs, five of these. Okay, so after this discussion, uh, we did have both uh, the Alliance and DOT at the meeting, the committee agreed with a resolution before you that basically says, in light of the fact that they have agreed to many of the key conditions, we think, and the signs basically are in disrepair and should be repaired. So the committee agreed to recommend that the Public Design Commission approve this. However, we are still asking that both DOT and the Alliance work with the community board on some of the unfulfilled uh, concerns that are listed at the bottom of the resolution, including putting up additional signs, which both parties seem somewhat uh, <laughs> open to. And um, I'll just leave it at that. Thank you. Perfect. All right, I think I do not see any hands up, so I'm going to call the question. Ah. Do I get a second? Can, we, can I second? <laughs> Absolutely, <laughs> let's roll. Okay, so uh, again, this is going to be an all in one roll call vote kind of a thing. No roll call, just a all affirmation. So 
Do I hear any no's? Uh, James, Kettering no for this one. Uh, Kettering recuses. Thank you, my, Mr. Kettering, for recusing. I believe James was that James, you? James, no for this one. Uh huh. Thank you. Are there any other no's or recusals? Blank oh. abstains. Blank abstains. Curtis Abaruso abstain. Am I allowed to speak, Tammy? Oh. Down, Curtis slow, abstains. Slow down, slow slow abstains. Okay, well, 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 guys, slow down. Slow down because remember what you're saying. Lucy has to record. So let's try this again. Are there any no's? James, no. James, no. Are there any recusals? Kettering. Perfect. Are there any other recusals? Perfect. Justine, I see you have your hand up. May I vote no, please? Yes, you could just call out. When we say call out, you can call out. No is my next role. No. Great. So, are there any other? Uh, we've done no. Do Thank you. Curtis yeah. abstains. That's Curtis abstains. Thank you. Cunningham abstains. Cunningham abstains. Thank you. Cunningham Cole abstains. Cunningham, hold on. Cunningham, you must recuse. Recuse. Yes, Cunningham recuses. Thank you. Who was the next abstention? Cole. Cole abstains. Any other abstentions? Amaruso abstains. Fantastic. Amaruso abstains. Brown, Brown Kennedy abstains. Brown Kennedy abstains. abstains. Whoa, whoa, whoa. One at a time. I heard Coolamentis. Correct. And more. And more. And airman abstains. And airman. And blank. McHugh abstains. Okay. All right. With that, Lucy, do you have a vote? Yes, we have them. Thank you very much. Okay, great. With that, uh, moving on. Okay. Next, uh, we had a presentation by the China Institute, which is located at 100 Washington Street. We heard from uh, James Heimowitz, who's their president, as well as Cliff Priest, Director of Institutional Giving. And they told us all about their program. They've been here about five years. And as you could see on the slide, they have a School of Chinese Studies, uh, China Institute Gallery, public programs. Uh, they do business programs. Uh, next. They have a lot of wonderful art that they bring in from different museums that they exhibit. Next. They are doing additional work on their site, including this, the new outside space that is uh, under, under construction now, as I believe. Next. And this also is a space that will soon be completed and open to the public, just to give you an idea of what it looks like. Is, is that the last one? I think so. Okay, and just finishing up the other items on the agenda were delayed until uh, you gave the report on the walking tour. So I'll leave it at that. Thank you. All right, Paul, thanks so much. Um, and do, do, do. so next goes Trisha with Youth and Ed. And then I know we have transportation tonight and we're gonna do something for new business in transportation so keep everybody excited as well tammy Join i have us. my hand up oh bruce for a procedural question what D didn't you uh set up a new procedure regarding reports as opposed to resolutions no more than 10 that. minutes and paul was under i see thank you youth and ed trisha hello um 
So we had a pretty busy meeting. Um, we had Monique Joseph Riley from the Freedom uh, Freedom Youth Family Justice Center, which um, is an amazing organization working to eliminate human trafficking. So it was really informative um, discussion we had with her and let them know that they have our support. Um, I also will be connecting them with you so that when people call the office, we can connect them. Um, we had uh, Kevin Aware, who was supposed to be uh, here last month. He was able to come um, to talk about Black Gotham experience. Um, they have some really interesting things going on, like walking tours, collaborations with schools. They have um, funding available for schools that can't afford it. Um, they are interested in trying to work some of what they do into school curriculums. So we connected them with our local schools. Um, they want to find ways to use technology to work with the park service. They have some really amazing ideas. So it's a group we're going to be keeping in very close touch with. Um, the next thing is uh, Church Street School, as everybody well might know. Um, Lisa has stepped down after 30 years as the director of Church Street School of Music and Art. Um, Judy Levine came, who's the director of their board, and talked about the transition. They're looking for a new director. They're taking uh, meetings with that now, and they're looking for support during their transition. Um, Abby reached out. To they have their big event coming up in June. The office will send out a blast on that um, this week for those who are interested. Um, updates on PS 150 reopening and rezoning. Um, <clears throat> so the Trinity Place School is on schedule for opening February 2022. We had <laughs> a PDF come around today that PS 150 parents sent me because I have asked for updates from the construction authority three times on where the construction is. We have yet to determine whether the PDF we received today is new. We saw on the PDF that there was still a gymatorium and also uh, no enlarged sidewalk, both of which have been discussed and agreed upon resolutions. The, the sidewalk was, you know, in many, 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 many meetings with the DOT, they agreed to extend the Southern sidewalk as most of you'll remember to, to accommodate a plaza there. And then in our September 2016 overcrowding task force, they confirmed that there would be no gymatorium, but an auditorium and a gym. So we're not jumping to conclusions. It's just a PDF. I am looking into it. Um, but right now, what we did get out of it is the school should be, that was the language, should be on schedule to open fall 2022. PS 150 um, will be moving into that building. That's been confirmed. And it's also been confirmed that it will be choice. Um, so it will maintain the same structure that PS 150 currently has. So, uh, if there's any questions about that, Pat, uh, I see Pat Moore. Uh, yeah, it's it's not. It's about the uh, closing of the street, and we don't have to discuss that now. But we never got back to actually having a more in-depth conversation about that. So I want to keep go on record that we need to get back to discussing that. Yes, they're not closing the street. Um, so we are definitely, Wait. we can get back to that later. Um, but the, the, I, I didn't see that they're not closing the street. So it's going to be right. open um, to both directions. At this point, yeah. Okay. Correct. Um, Thank you. The, uh, I'm going to go to mental health impact on children during COVID. Uh, that was postponed until June, but I'm really anxious to hear from our partners at NYU Langone talking about the mental health impact on children during COVID-19. And that is a perfect segue into our resolution 
um, which I hope you guys had time to read. It's lengthy. Um, and, but I wanted to make sure and include all of the points that everyone in the committee brought up. I also wanted to make sure it was thorough. Uh, my, our experience with the blended learning resolution led me to believe or led me to uh, look way out in front in terms of things that can happen. The city, as you know, when they announced blended learning, they made it sound like children were going into the school three days a week for synchronous full-time learning. And what that boiled down into, which is one of the whereas is here, is kids going in as little as one day or no days, the ones that went in one day or two days um, on the middle and high school level, oftentimes were on their computers at school, remoting into a teaching session that was either happening somewhere else in the building or happening with the teacher at home. The lack of synchronous learning um, in that environment was, you know, a surprise to parents when they got to school. It, when you think about it and you look at the fact that they would need triple the amount of teachers to be able to achieve synchronous learning, it's pretty obvious that they couldn't have done it. But nonetheless, it ended up straining our teachers, creating expectations, creating a lot of uncertainty, chaos, a lot of families opted out after opting in. And one thing I know going forward is that we have to make sure to do everything we can to hold the city of New York and the Department of Education and the United Federation of Teachers feet to the fire in terms of what they're committing to this fall. So and Trisha, uh, with that, that sounds like a perfect summary. I see a hand up, mm -hmm. which I'm gonna say, let's 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 take some questions and then call the question. All right. So I'm gonna go in order this way. I'm gonna go Betty. Mark, Judith, Betty, take it away. Sorry, I have to flip between, between screens here. Uh, my question is, why is it that teachers can't enter the building? Because that is a part of this. They can enter the building um, and they are in the building. There's a lot of teachers in the building. The no, problem go down to the therefore be it resolved. Uh -huh. It says that if the teacher has a medical accommodation, they are not permitted to come to the building unless they waive their medical accommodation. You can't have it both ways. You can't have an accommodation and go to the building. True, but that's kind of my question is who who's had a vaccination have a medical accommodation at this point? Because it so makes no sense. People that can, there are people that cannot have a vaccination. My daughter's track coach and Spanish teacher cannot have a vaccination <laughs> because she has a heart condition. So she has no option but to keep her medical accommodation. She will have to stay home until the school is 100% for everyone vaccinations or not. That, right, but then they're covered by they can't get a vaccination, the first part. They are, but what's happened, Betty, is that no one is making a decision about what to do with those people. They're wishing and hoping and praying something happens or it doesn't. There's no plan for the 21,000 teachers that currently have medical accommodations. And the mayor is saying we're all going back to school in the fall. There is no plan, just like there was no plan for the blended learning. So what we're saying is, flesh out how many of these 21,000 have a medical condition that will prevent them from getting the vaccine. Take care of them. Offer them that great suggestion of that teacher who said that all remote learning, if there is any offered, should be done centrally. It was a great idea. That way the schools aren't responsible for, for trying to do both with the changing uh, student population. Focus on in the school learning, hire enough teachers to achieve it, take care of the teachers that can't come, either with you know reduced salary, leave of absence, or that central idea, and hire new teachers and get them in place. It is the third week of May. And if you're hiring a teacher for September, it needs to be happening right now. Let's let's do more succinct answers. No offense intended. Betty, you good? 
Uh, well, no, actually, this says to give them a, to let them not show up. So I'm just wondering why we're giving a blanket. Thank you. Okay. If you had one before, you can continue it. I, I don't think it should be blanket. Okay. No. It, that's, Mark, not, that's not what the resolution says, but. Mark and then Judith. Yeah, I think asking only hiring vaccinated teachers is discriminatory. Uh, you're creating two categories of people without and with, which is the essence of discrimination. And that should not be a factor. I think that be it resolved there should be should be eliminated. Uh, just because someone can't get vaccinated or won't get doesn't want to get vaccinated for religious reasons, health reasons, or whatever, should not be a reason why they should not be rehired, hired, fired, um, not allowed to work in their profession. So I'm uh, proposing that that that, where, that that therefore be resolved. I'm making an amendment that it be eliminated. Mark, the thing is, they can't come into the building unless they're vaccinated. They're not going to open the school. Well, that's, right? that's that's that uh, shouldn't be for us to, to to decide. I mean, we shouldn't we shouldn't be promoting the discrimination that whoever is making that decision or Mark. Murder. Or whatever. You don't have to vote for it. You can vote against it if you don't I like. I just it. made a proposal uh, amendment to re remove that. That uh, um, that therefore be resolved. So if anyone wants to second it, it's up to them. Okay, Judith, you're next. I just wanted to propose a friendly amendment. When um, when we came up with this resolution in committee, it was before Mayor De Blasio made the announcement, and so. Um, I think Trisha uh, wanted to to put in to add that in, but it's in the wrong place now because so on the first page, it now says Mayor de Blasio announced on May 24, 2021 that all New York City public schools will reopen in fall 2021 with no remote learning option without supporting information on the steps the city and the DOE will achieve this. And then it says, and whereas elementary schools in CB1 lost up to 20% of their enrollment due to the failure of the plan. Yeah, so Judith, you're absolutely correct. So I where, so that. I looked I looked for the pla a place to put it. For me, the only way to where to put it is right before the therefore be it resolved because every other thing really relates to sort of the failure of the hybrid learning. So it just doesn't belong. I mean, you can look, but I think really it has to belong right before the the therefore be it resolved. I I accept that amendment wholeheartedly. Thank you, Judith. Mariama, you're next. Sorry, somebody gave me dinner. Mariama has her hand down. So Oh no, I was just taking it down so because I was gonna I'm I'm answering. Yes, I'm sorry. Okay. I didn't mean to confuse you. Um the be it resolved where you asked the SCA to um correct the ventilation issues and, and other things. You may want to make reference to now this is not an official friendly amendment, just a potential suggestion. Make reference to um, the New York Heroes Act that the governor just signed that is for all those workplace protections it, it, um, with regard to COVID and, and these things. But ventilation, it has to be fixed. Um, Marianne, I know. also accept that amendment. That's a great one. Totally forgot about it. Thank, Thank you, Mariama. Alice, your hand is up. Just a quickie, just, I don't know, I just happened to uh, see this, just, I would probably put the word some in front of private schools and even charter schools. Some private schools and charter schools provided synchronous instruction. There were quite a few that did not, in fact, were bitterly criticized for it. So, so I, I would, just a small thing. Except that too. Okay. Sorry, point of order. <laughs> Could someone just track those and send them to me? I think there's three now. It is some in front of the charter and privates. It is moving one, uh, whereas down to the bottom from the top. And the third one was in referencing the uh, HEROES Act and the ventilation in the ventilation paragraph that just passed. All right, uh, Lucian, just check me on this later, okay? I can also, I can send you the language, Colin. That would be amazing, thank you. Yeah, that, that's the best. Okay. Fantastic. With no other hands up, let's call the question. Do I hear a second? Second. 
Fantastic. So we're going to roll the way we roll. Um, do I hear any no's? Uh, can't support, support discrimination. Amber Russo's a no. Um, okay. Any other no's? Do I hear any? Uh, Jeff Myhock and anybody else who is a teacher, because this is directly about DOE, you must recuse. So let's go. Do I have any recusals? I do. I didn't need to be reminded of that, but thanks. There you go. And abstentions? Hearing no. Cunningham abstains. Cunningham abstains. Fantastic. Hearing no other abstentions? He abstains. K abstains. Any others? Fantastic. Hearing no others, motion passes and let's move to the next committee. It's quality of life. Let's do the resolution first. We have some people speak in public session. I hope everybody's read it. It's sponsored by Senator Kavanaugh. Um, any questions? Okay. God bless you, Pat. I see no questions. Hey, I'd call the questions. That's the only thing I would do. All right. I second that. So we're going to go all in favor. So are there any no's? Are there any abstentions? Are there any recusals? Fantastic motion passes. Quick reports. Quick Thank reports. You. We had uh, the, the committee discussed in depth the uh, 10 proposed reforms for the property tax. We couldn't come to agreement, so we didn't write a resolution about it. We will circle back around and have this discussion, a continuing discussion about the uh, property tax and the reforms. Uh, we had the Office of Nightlife Czar, Ariel Collette's come to talk about MEND, which is Mediating Establishments and Neighborhood Disputes. It is something that I would like to speak to the licensing. Mark was there, so we want to, we would like to go forward. Um, Working with them, they are there to dispute uh, disagreements between tenants, residents, and small businesses, which also means restaurants and bars. And um, they are not there to look at or change any stipulations that we have included when we come to an agreement with a bar slash restaurant. So uh, they are there just to mediate, and we will work with them in the future. The last thing is, as always, every month we have uh, Brian Nelson come from first precinct. So for those of you who can't make it to the first precinct uh, council meeting, you can come to quality of life meeting and bring up anything that you need to discuss with the first precinct. Also to hear their stats and any issues that have occurred in the month. Uh, any, you know, crimes. That's it. Thank you, Pat. Really appreciate it. Next committee. Oh my gosh, are we at the end? Is this Betty? Uh, fortunately, there's a big speed bump for you. Um, that's land use zoning and economic development. We have three meaty resolutions um, with uh, citywide impact um, and an important update on five world trade. I know we heard from some folks in the public session. Uh, just get right to it. So, uh, first is uh, the elevate transit, the zoning for accessibility citywide um, zoning text amendment. Uh, the New York City Department of City Planning and the Mayor's Office of People with Disabilities are proposing a citywide text amendment. Um, the city is proposing to allow the MCA to work with private developers to increase uh, the number of points of accessibility to subways and trains by doing two things. First, Sorry, Pat's the text breaking up. Uh, is everybody on mute? I was hearing a little bit of feedback. I'm sorry. Yeah, well, let's make sure everyone's muted. Can you okay. mute me for me? Jennifer, you got to mute Tammy. <laughs> One and only time. Um, this would um, increase accessibility to subways and trains by doing, as I said, two things. Two things. First, the tax amendment would um, implement a system wide transit easement requirement. And then second, it would expand an existing transit improvement bonus program for private developers that make uh, certain station improvements for accessibility near their developments. 
We've heard about uh, these challenges before. This community board in particular has experience with the transit bonus program. Folks may remember from 45 Broad Street, where we learned a lot about the accessibility problems with the transit system. And one of the things that we learned was accessibility problems affect not just those with physical disabilities or ambulatory issues, it affects seniors, it affects um, you know, those with young children who are using strollers. And uh, the city explained to us that of the 8.4 million New York City residents, 550,000 have ambulatory disabilities, another 500,000 are children under five, and 1.2 million are uh, folks who are 65 plus. So you can see a lot of potential um, users with accessibility needs. But only 136 of the 439 subway stations, and as you see, 25 of the 39 LIRR stations are accessible. Uh, in its 2020 to 2024 capital plan budget, the MTA has committed $5 billion to make 77 stations more accessible. It's good news, but even with that, it won't be enough to meet the MTA's goal that no subway rider will be more than two stops away from an accessible station. So this tax amendment is meant to supplement the MTA's capital investments by expanding the easement requirements and increasing participation um, in the transit bonus program. For the easement requirement, this is not a bonus. This is a requirement that certain properties in order to be developed would have to consult with the MTA and the CPC chair to determine if the MTA requires an easement to that development for an accessibility module. This would apply to any development over 5,000 square feet and within 50 feet of the transit station. And you can see on the map in the next slide how this would apply in Community District 1. Now for the transit bonus program, again, which this, this already exists, uh, but in exchange for significant station improvements, developers would get up to a 20% floor area increase. Uh, the text amendment would expand the coverage of the transit bonus program to developments from within 500 feet of the station with accessibility needs to within 1,500 feet. That's the largest change in the feature, and that's exactly where they're expanding the transit bonus program. Um, you can see on the map in the next slide how this would affect or how this would apply in community district one. It's a little confusing because you see the amount of purple there makes it look like the entirety of the southern portion of CD1 is um, somehow up for grabs for all sorts of bonuses. But as you can see in the northern portion of that, um, some of those stations already are accessible. So we're really talking about those in the southern part of that purple zone along Wall Street uh, mainly. Um, and with uh, the, the proposal to expand would have some additional guardrails to make sure that um, six of the, that the bonus reflects the degree of the improvement, that the elevators are, um, that vertical improvements like elevators are prioritized and that the bonus um, can only be occupied and used once the MTA determines that the improvement is actually usable by the public. That I think is one of the first times we're seeing bonuses tied to the amenity actually being utilized by the public. The city hopes for final approval and adoption of this proposal by this fall. Um, the committee had a number of technical questions, um, including some extremely helpful questions. Thank you, Rosa, um, for the points that you offered. Those are included in the therefore be it resolved of the resolution. Another big concern for the committee was how the transit bonus incorporates the underlying MIH requirements, that's mandatory inclusionary housing. And uh, the committee expressed a concern that we've heard um, at the community board for uh, some time in other contexts, which is that the city should really consider other incentives to try to achieve these civic improvements and not rely on private development bonuses and tax breaks because they're frankly overly burdensome in the community already as worthy as the goals are of this particular program. So with those conditions and concerns, the committee voted overwhelmingly in favor of the text amendment with two abstentions. And I think Tammy may have some additional information learned during the recent borough board meeting um, and maybe some additional language to offer based on what she learned there, um, which if that is the case, we can do that in a motion to amend. And I would ask Tammy to take the floor on that in a moment. But first, I just want to hear whether 
anybody has any questions um, on the proposal generally and the resolution. So going through, I see Bruce's hand up first. Uh, sorry, Betty, he beat you. So we're going to go Bruce, then Betty Kay. Um, and there are some others. Hi, I really appreciate the craft of this proposal and the next one. I, I do want to point out number one that 5,000 square feet as the floor for this is basically every development in Manhattan. Bruce, I think you muted yourself after. I'm sorry. Uh, I was just saying that this resolution and the subsequent one are so well crafted. But to be clear, uh, as a floor, 5,000 square feet and above, that means virtually every development in New York City. Nothing, no developer bothers, at least residentially, for 5,000 square feet or less. And 20%, when you calculate what, let's say, a typical new development would be in lower Manhattan, I mean, if it's if it's I mean, imagine the difference from uh, 150 feet tall plus 20 percent, and that's not including square footage. So it's a huge concession. And going by the um, example of I think it's 45 broad, which you which you uh, uh, mentioned, uh, that was a accessible subway stop a few feet away from another subway stop the developer got a huge concession for an enormous tower there was lots of time spent on the design of the new accessible subway kiosk which was partially built the developer has walked away from the project the developer did not go bankrupt is extremely wealthy and just walked away so this is the problem when the city seeds its social responsibility and its governmental responsibility to private developers. Thank you. Thanks, Bruce. Um, Thank just you. one clarifying point of when you raised about the 5,000 square foot um, threshold, that is obviously that's any development. Um, that's for the requirement, is if that development is within 50 <laughs> feet of the accessible station, that the um, MTA needs to review it to see whether they need to claim an easement so that they could one day potentially put an elevator inside of whoever's development. So it's a little, it's not, it doesn't give any bonus. It doesn't give any, um, anything additional to the developer. In fact, it's um, more of a restriction on the property, but just to clarify that point. I'll, I'll I see. Thank you on that point. Thank you. Uh, Betty, then um, Michael Francoeur, you still have your hand up, then Mitch Froman, and then Tammy. Can you also put up the resolution so we can see the therefore be it resolved while we're doing this? Thank you. Mm. Did you make it bigger? Thank you, Mitch. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, actually, I'm going to be referring to the third one here. And thank you, Patrick, for the great description uh, of this really important piece of zoning change. Uh, but I have a question that I want to clarify about the FAR that's given should be subject to underlying inclusionary housing requirements because there really is no housing requirement associated with this particular zoning change. Is this implying or this saying? That in fact they have to do affordable housing if they're going to do this other. Um, I I will actually defer to Tammy in a moment, um, who I believe was the driving force behind this. But as I understand it, the point here is to make sure that any additional bonus given is already taking into account um, any bonus that you might get. Um, for mandatory inclusionary housing, in other words, that we're not getting a bonus on top of a bonus. Um, or that if, if you are, that at least whatever amount of bonus you're getting for MIH is somehow accounted into that. So, Tammy, is that what we were tending there? The language probably could be cleaned up, Betty. Yeah. I think they were... What, Betty, what it should be is like floor area bonuses for lots that are subject to mandatory inclusionary housing rules should include affordable housing units, right? You shouldn't be able to stack them 
but not have to not have it apply with MIH. Oh, well, then I was going to my concern is. As a speaker said that will sink these projects. Because you're asking somebody who adds some space to put in elevators, pays for the elevators, maintains the elevators to also change whatever their plan is to also add affordable housing. Just as I wouldn't tell an affordable housing group, they must put in an elevator for transportation. Betty, it's this is kind of a poison pill. Betty, it's for those that are already subject to mandatory inclusional housing. They are already subject to it. So this, this, is, this bonus should be included with that. Can I just clarify a point though, um, just in case there's a misunderstanding, this is Rosa. Um, so for a lot that already has a mandatory inclusionary housing requirement, and let's say it's a percentage, let's say it's like 5% or whatever of the um, total uh, zoning square footage that they would have, then what they're saying is that if they, if the deal with the MTA provides for an additional three FAR, then 10% of the additional three FAR would have to also be affordable housing. So it's not introducing affordable housing into a project that doesn't have it. What it's saying is that whatever percentage of affordable housing is the underlying requirement of that site would also apply to the additional FAR that is being provided. So if they had to provide, let's say, um, 50,000 square feet of affordable housing in the project already, then maybe with the additional <laughs> FAR given, they might have to increase that now to 60,000 square feet. But it's not, it's not putting something there that wasn't there to begin with. It's just increasing it proportional to the to the benefit that they would receive by making the deal with the MTA. Correct. I also and clarify, because the speakers also said some of these increases did not necessarily afford any, include any housing in them. They included just the accommodation of space for what was going to be added. Correct. So, right. So that means that this should really clearly say that, that if the building already has, because it doesn't say that, and then if they add housing space to their allotment, to their bonus, then that should reflect. It doesn't say that either. It just needs to say that the FAR bonus from the transit improvements on lots <laughs> that are subject to inclusionary housing requirements include that in it. I mean, it's really- If they add housing. That's what we're saying is on those that are already underlying inclusionary housing requirements. The underlying is is there. We're not saying no, you're, for, not, you're missing my point. That I understand and that's good. But also not all of these are going to add additional housing space. That may not be what they're asking. Yes, but that's does change that. So, so would would the amendment read that to the extent that the development is a participant in MIH, H, comma, any, et cetera, is that what you mean? And is adding more space for residents. And, and I'm sorry, I missed the last part. And is adding residential space. <clears throat> The housing is only applicable when it when they're um, doing residential, so they can utilize the FAR for community facility, residential, commercial, whatever it is. So if they choose to go with the commercial, then the mandatory housing or the inclusionary housing is not applicable, and they can utilize the full extent of the additional FAR for commercial if they so choose. If so, if they're not commercial, you're telling me that. This doesn't make any sense. If it is a residence and they get this, they don't have to add more res no residential space is being added in that allotment. They don't have to Correct. increase the amount that goes to affordability. <laughs> Correct. Because that's not clear that's not clear to me. I want to make sure that's what it says. But that that's just how the zoning works. Like you you have the ability 
with any property to go, let's say, commercial community facility or residential, and you slice and dice, you know, however you like. Um, so, so for instance, this may be too specific, but if you look at the five World Trade Center site, um, you know, let's say that, you know, I don't know it specifically, but let's say that the total FAR that they were allowed was 15 and, uh, you know, that includes fifth, you could use the entirety of 15 FAR for, for community facility, right? Then you wouldn't have to use any for residential, but maybe the maximum FAR for residential on that site is 10. So that means that then you could use t up to 10 FAR for residential and the remaining five for community facility. Or this, this may get too specific, sorry, but they don't have to choose yeah. to use residential if they don't want to. I, I think saying. if we can if we can bridge the gap here, Betty, but to the extent that the development or to the extent that the development is a participant in the mandatory inclusion mandatory inclusionary housing program, comma, and then the rest of that sentence. Would that work? Uh yes, I just have some clarity for the responsibility. Because I don't want to sabotage nobody wanting to get into this program. Right. And, and, and right. I think that that would achieve the goal. Um so with I'll accept that as a friendly amendment because I think that reflects the sense of the committee. Um, Michael Francoeur, then maybe we can Sure. I think actually I just had clarifying questions about that um, about that too. So I'll just comment that uh, thank you for the work uh, on this on this uh, you know resolution. I think this is a really great policy the city is offering or is is trying to get done. Um, and you know accessibility in our subways is so 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 important and we're what 30 years behind uh, the passage of ada which is really uh, i mean a disgrace um and uh yeah this is like a win-win right like unfortunately ada accessibility is very expensive it's very expensive to put these elevators in uh so we get accessibility and in return the the private um you know developers uh add bulk to their building which coincidentally is adding bulk right next to a transport a public transit station which is exactly if we're going to be rezoning for or upzoning anywhere it should be right next to a subway station so um i think this is a great policy so thanks guys thanks michael mitch and Tammy. hi just for my own education uh in where you have in cases where an easement and you have you know easement all over can you just clarify what the, the term easement is, is, uh, you know, I'm, I'm a little confused. Uh, I sure. agree with everything you wrote, but I'm just confused about that term, how it's used here. Sure. Easement is a legal concept where um, the owner of a property gives um, the right to whoever holds that easement to come on to the property to do something. So in the case, think of a public utility, if you have um, a house and you have a, um, a, a giant pipe running through your lawn, that, that's like a big pipeline. That can be an easement utility. Um, in this case specifically, it means that the MTA would have a right to use a portion of the building to do whatever it needed to do for the, for the easement. So in this case, install an elevator, uh, put the head house for an escalator. Uh, so the portion of the building that they use is, it comes under the term easement? Yes. yes. Thank you. You want something? Amy? So there are there are a couple of things that I want to make sure that we have in here. Um, uh, one of them that um, we don't have as much, but has come up on borough board was the conversation of merged lots, which we have see, starting to see some of merged lots. Um, I know there are a couple of developers who have merged lots. And that the density cap applied to merge lots in order to ensure that the FAR bonus is kept at an acceptable level so that it's not a double bonus based on merge lots. Um, that's one friendly amendment. Um, and then there were um, lots of discussions on borough board about the FAR improvements. Um, you know, making sure that the FAR do not include primary improvements, which are beautification, providing daylight, rider orientation, or noise abatement, that they are actually not, you know, um, co-opted for other things that it may, retains being for accessibility. 
Um, so that is a second thing that I would make sure that we have in here somewhere. Um, and so that's one, that's two. Um, and that the community board and borough president notice be included as a requirement before CPC authorizes additional modifications to zoning regulations as outlined in the proposed section. Okay, for those three things, um, they're substantive. I think we need to do them by a motion to amend, but we can do this very quickly. Um, if you'd make a motion to amend those three, I'll send it. We can do this by um, an acclamation vote. I don't think we need a roll call. I so move that. I can do that. And I'll second point two it. Two is already in there. Tammy's point two is already in there. I didn't About. see it. Rosa, I didn't see it, but maybe I missed it. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'm good. I'm good with that. I see it. So the other well, we two points, merge lots, community board borough president notice. Um, Susan yes. has uh, made a motion to amend. I second it. Tim, you want to take the vote? I'd be happy to. I will lower my hand. And um, so we'll do by affirmation. So are there any no's? Hearing no no's, any abstentions? Blank abstains. Any other abstentions? Great. Abstains. Great. Cole abstains. After Airman, Cole abstains. Okay. Are there any recusals? Fantastic. Motion passes. So now, Patrick, we'll take, you want to call the question to take the vote on it? Call the main question on the resolution. Yep. Main resolution. So this is for the zoning for accessibility. Um, all in favor is going to be an affirmation vote. So anyone opposed? Any abstentions? Like abstains. That was blank abstaining. That was airman abstaining. That's Meltzer abstaining. Are there any other abstentions? Hearing none, any recusals? Thank you very much, Patrick. Moving, moving on to the next item, uh, hotel special permit. Department of City Planning pre uh, presented on the mayor's proposal for a citywide zoning text amendment. To require a special permit. Uh, can we mute Tammy again? Sorry, it's just coming back with a little bit of feedback. Um, to require a special permit for the development or building of new hotels throughout the city. Um, in 2019, the city says it saw a record number of hotels in the pipeline as tourism numbers uh, continue to set records. And the idea here, according to DCP, is to create a consistent framework for the development of hotels throughout the city so that they don't affect surrounding neighborhoods, obviously. Currently, the city requires special permits for hotels in several specific areas for various reasons. But with this proposal, special permits will be required for new hotel conversions in um, high density commercial districts, mixed use districts, uh, M1 residential districts. And as you can see on the map, two slides up, I think, Diana, see how it would affect us in community district one. Up one more. There we go. Uh, you see in, in pink there the amount uh, that it would, the special permit requirement would uh, apply heavily throughout community district one. Um, the DCP presenters acknowledge the effects of COVID-19 on the hotel and tourism industries. Um, and here you can see in the next slide um, that uh, 146 hotels, DCP estimates out of 705, closed in the 11 months, first 11 months of 2020, which is about 20% of all New York City hotels. 96.3% of those closures were in Manhattan. Uh, DCP estimates that translated to a loss of one, about 197,000 jobs. And in fact, the um, DCP environmental review showed that there would be a significant impact 
to the hotel and tourism industries by enacting this proposal. But to counter some of this, the city would propose some mitigations to the text amendment, um, basically grandfathering in projects that were already in the pipeline or that had active land use um, applications so that so long as the project was completed within um, six years. Uh, some on the committee liked this proposal and felt that it was a long overdue plan to regulate what they saw as the proliferation of hotels being built in New York City, particularly throughout our area. Others on the committee wondered why this proposal is coming about now at a time when uh, the hotel and tourism industries and other businesses are being uh, crushed and in, are impacting the city's overall economy, uh, particularly when DCP's environmental review acknowledged that it would significantly impact the hotel and tourism industries. But in the end, um, you see in the resolution, the committee voted in approval of the text amendment um, in a closer vote. It was eight in favor and five either opposed or abstaining. Uh, with that, anybody have questions? I see Bruce's hand is up. Bruce, you can go first, then Justine, then Michael Frank, please. I will be quick. I just want to say that uh, I think this proposal is a slam dunk. I, I think that although so many hotels have closed or been converted to uh, shelters, believe me, which it is doing now. And as soon as the what tourist- you break it up? I can't hear you. Huh. Can you hear me now? No? We can. Uh, I'm just saying that I think it's a slam dunk. Yes, many hotels have closed or have become shelters, but as soon as New York City recovers and as soon as the tourist industry recovers, both of which are occurring now, I guarantee you there will be enough hotels to accommodate the need. Developers are like bees to honey. Thank you. Thanks, Bruce. Justine and Michael. Um, I actually just have a question, not about this, but I'll be a quick question. Um, I was looking at the resolutions. You've got one more after this, and then after this, we've got Alice's committee and then the Battery Park City Committee. I do not have a resolution to bring, so your resolution will be the last one, your next one. I just want to that, in. that is incorrect with transportation. Oh, I thought we did it. Sorry. And transportation is at the end. Sorry. I thought we did it. We move quickly. It's 930. Correct. I'm pushing. Michael, you're next. Yeah, sure. I just wanted to, I mean, Patrick, you highlighted it, but I just want to make sure the community know the community board knows this is a very controversial uh um zoning. Uh I, there's actually been really uh decent uh news coverage of it. I think the New York Times had a headline that was, you know, the seven billion dollar mistake question mark. Um this from what I've read, uh, you know, this means that it, in order to build a new hotel, you have to get a special permit, which is going through like a ULERT process. And we know how crazy the ULERT process is. And it's it's such that it's going to make it a lot of urban planners think that it's going to make it so difficult that there's no new hotels that are going to be built. And right now, yeah, is that a problem? I mean, not necessarily. We had so many hotels in our district. I, I kind of shrugged when I first learned about this. Um, but there can be unintended or actually intended consequences here you know a, a lot of our economy as we know over the past year is fueled by tourism is fueled by work trips um you know broadway etc we all we live we thrive on tourism so as much as you know we poo poo on you know a big chunk of our economy is driven by them it can also have unintended impacts on our housing supply right like i feel like if we're not building enough if we're not building enough hotels uh, sorry if we're not building enough hotels and we're not building up housing we see how like Airbnb, the scourge of Airbnb can come in and kind of impact our housing supply. So I just hope that everyone considers all the implications here. I, I'm not 100 percent, you know, one way or another. I actually think I'm I'm leaning towards voting against it, but I just know that it is, uh, you know, a hot topic. And the, a lot of uh, I've heard that like the uh, city agency kind of slow walked this because they really didn't like it. Uh, that's all. Thanks, Michael. And yes, that's that's true. It's definitely. Um, a, a controversial enough proposal for political reasons and some think it's uh, a mayoral giveaway to the hotel trades um, council. Some um, have argued, well, why are you taking one class of buildings out of the as of rights scheme or others? But, um, and, and as I mentioned, some folks have, have brought up the economic constraints. Any other questions? Uh, Susan, how are you? 
just wanted to say that I happen to agree with Bruce. Um, I think it's, I happen to think it's a good, it's good because we have plenty and there are plenty in the pipeline already. So that's all I wanted to say. Thank you. Seeing no other hands up, I'm going to call the question on the resolution. Tammy? All right, let's go. Um, not, sorry. Um, okay, so if you, are a no, please last name and no. Canel, no. Kettering, no. Mahoney, no. no. Well, okay, and that the, the other one was Schneck, no. Okay, got it. No. Okay. Repeat, Repeat that. K, no, no. Chang, K, no. no. Who was the one? No. All right, hold on a second. Let's get most people muted. After Schneck, no. Who was the next one? Chang, no. Momentus, no. Mm -hmm. No. Get Chapman, no. Kerr, no. Zelter, no. Okay. Are there any abstentions? I did get K. Thank you. Are there any abstentions? Blank abstains. Brown Kennedy abstains. Any Did other? Lerner abstains. Okay. With that, are there any recusals? Okay. Okay. Next up is the planning together. Um, long-term planning framework resolution uh, we've talked about this at prior um OV committee updates uh, and now we're bringing it to a resolution basically the city council proposes a comprehensive planning process where uh effectively a I think sorry tammy we're gonna have to mute you joe joe you got a mute no learner thank you okay. <laughs> um where effectively a citywide steering committee would use data points collected by the city for the project and would produce a citywide goals statement um, in an effort to achieve a uniform and equitable goals for all kinds of planning resources, schools, transportation, infrastructure, housing, social services, et cetera. The citywide goals statement would then be used by neighborhoods, which would include, but not be limited to the borough presidents and the community boards come up with um, five major elements that would be incorporated into a 10 year long term plan, which would then get reviewed and voted on by the city council. Um, that those five major elements would include strategic policies and analysis of the city's zoning resolutions to see whether there were any needed amendments to achieve these planning goals, district level targets, community district land use scenarios and community district budget needs. And then, as I said, this would all go into a final long term plan, which would then theoretically be used as the baseline to inform these broad planning decisions going forward. This is not replacing as of right development, which is 80% of the city of the development in New York City. This is not replacing ULERP, but all future ULERP applications would have to include a statement saying how that application aligns with the long term plan. Um, this is really meant to provide a strategic plan that the, that the city and planners can use. Uh, there have been numerous concerns and criticisms with, uh, with the legislation um, from all corners of the city. Um, most everyone seems to support the goal of comprehensive long-term planning. That's a laudable thing to be for, but many worry that this creates a top-down approach um, particularly when you're planning from a steering, a citywide steering committee where there's a lot of oversight for the mayor's office. And they're wondering how that marginalizes neighborhoods and community boards who already felt marginalized by the current constraints of the Euler process. Um, other concerns are thoughtfully laid out, I think, in our resolution, which is supportive of the idea again, but is opposed to the legislation unless it is uh, amended to deal with these concerns. The resolution passed our committee um, unanimously, and I would note that other community boards have passed similar resolutions opposing the legislation as is. 
Um, so with that, we'll go to questions. Um, Bruce, then Colin, then Tim. I'm sorry. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry I'm commenting so much, but these do concern me. Just a housekeeping question. This doesn't make any sense uh, syntactically. It is problematic that the individuals creating the long-term comprehensive plans for community boards to review work for the mayor's office, et cetera. It's either problematic for the individuals too, or it's problematic that the individuals review without the two. That's all I'm saying. Thank you. Um, yeah, I just wanted to uh, say thanks to whoever wrote this resolution. It's one of the most comprehensive and thoughtful resolutions. Rezos. Uh, I've read in a while, so that's all. Thanks. You can thank Diana. Thank you. Thanks, Diana. Madam Chair. I would just like it to be a little bit clearer because while we do recognize the potential value, we need to be very clear that we are not approving it unless. So where we say that it be paused, you know, that's that's rather gentle. But I don't know if that actually gets through the point that we're saying no. Unless, I mean, it just needs to be super clear because <laughs> from there it goes to borough board. We are not the only board uh, having this topic. So I would like to make that a little bit more clear and then we're in good shape from my so perspective. So we would be striking recommends that it be paused and inserting um, opposes the legislation. Which is in fact as currently written. Yeah. Okay. Uh, that is a friendly amendment within the sense of the committee. Accept that. Any other questions? Nobody um, else has their hand. Yeah. Oh, did I Sorry. miss somebody? Patrick, right. could you just repeat what's being what you well, how that is being worded? Yeah. Because I think it's important, and we did discuss that the value of the long-term planning was certainly something we all agreed to. So I'm not sure. So is it therefore be it resolved in the third line um, where it says to this specific proposal and take out recommends that it be paused, replace that with opposes the legislation unless, well, okay. So take out recommends that it be paused until and insert opposes the legislation unless these considerations. Thanks. You're welcome. Colin and Tammy, your hands are up from earlier, correct? Hearing no for the questions, I'm going to call the question on the resolution. To vote by acclamation. Acclamation. Okay. So we're going to assume everyone is a yes. Do I hear any no's? Hearing no no's. Do I hear any abstentions? No abstentions. Do I hear any recusals? Fantastic work, everybody. Uh, it was a long, you know, two session meeting on this topic. Motion passes unanimously. Patrick, you done? Uh, you no, know, I do want to uh, try to get through a little bit of the five World Trade Center report. Normally, I would just give you an abbreviated. We'll tell you more later, um, but this does have some great, I think. We did receive an updated plan use from um, the state uh, economic development corp effectively the esd empire state development corp, lmdc and the joint venture that was the winning bidder for the development of five world trade center site the joint venture consists of four um, entities silverstein properties brookfield properties omni new york and daybar development omni and daybar are affordable housing providers um, and a couple quick seconds of history here. February 2006, a memorandum of understanding was executed between the LMDC and the Port Authority that swapped Site 5, which was owned by LMDC, for the sites of the Museum and the Memorial and Performing Arts Center sites, which were owned by the Port Authority. In June of 2019, um, LMDC and, and the Port Authority put out an RFP for Site 5. Um, calling for that 1.345 million square feet of development at a 900 uh, max, 900 foot, foot height max, consistent with the uh, Levaskin Master Plan. Uh, the winning RFP, of course, was this joint venture. Their concept is not yet a finished design or plan. It just briefly what it includes under a 99-year lease 
is about 1.2 million square feet of residential space, which is 1,325 apartments approximately. Um, about 330, uh, 330 of those or 25% are to be permanently affordable. For the affordability thresholds, 10% of those will be at or below 40% of the AMI, what they call deeply affordable. 10% will be at or below 60% of the AMI. None will be at above 80% of the AMI, contrary to some things that our community board has asked for in the past. Um, there'll be a certain amount of office space, 12,000 square foot community facility, and about 55,000 square feet of something called a public amenity. Um, for the community facility, that's something that um, they're continuing to talk about. Um, and as you've heard, the ESD has formed a community advisory council community consisting of several local organizations, including Community Board 1, um, to gather some feedback. Uh, on the next slide, I think it is, you'll see some renderings of the proposal. One more. There you go. Um, these are renderings of the design concept. Um, for the timeline, the fall uh, or winter, rather, fall to winter of this year, LMDC and um, Empire State Development Board will be undergoing the required environmental and other reviews and taking public comment, all with an eye toward final approvals in the spring and, uh, 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 spring and summer of 2022. Um, we had a lot of questions around public engagement, use of the 55,000 square feet, quote unquote, public amenity, and what um, really would happen with this community facility. Um, as I said, you're going to hear more probably through Tammy and the chair's reports in the future from community board one leadership um, as they're on um, the CAC and we'll be regularly updating this through land use, zoning and economic development. Um, Justine, I do see you have your hands up. Justine, can we wait on this to discuss in land use next simply because I'm looking at the time and we have much more. We don't really have any. I just would like to ask because you guys, there are certain folks who are on the like you, the, the, the CAC may or may may or may not meet before the land use meets again, and I I don't know that information, and I think that it's important to note for the record that there are a number of people who think that 25% affordable housing is not acceptable, and that the deal needs to go back to the table to get back to 100% affordability. That's all, and I know it's not time for a conversation now. I'm not asking for one. Just and that statement. It's not something that we haven't said, so gotcha. Fair. Okay, thank Patrick, you everybody. thank you very, very much. Um, I just kind of want to do some housekeeping notes because we have Alice and then we have Betty and I need to make a really clear statement. We're gonna do one resolution in new business and people are gonna freak out about it. However, we need to go on record opposing the 140 Broadway unless they return with approvals from DCP, LPC, and DOT. We wanna be extremely clear to put that out there. It's a very simple resolution that's gonna come up in new business. I'm sticking it out there because without it, I don't want any questions of what has happened here today, tonight, okay? On that note, Alice, take it away. And if you can make the announcement, I don't know if Andrew talked to you or not about the resiliency in the ball fields and the sidewalks. I haven't spoken to Andrew, but I'll give you what I've got. So just three things. We had a pretty easy meeting. Kate Boycourt, who from the Waterfront Alliance, who's the director of resiliency, uh, who is fantastic and a great organization. Um, they're uh, a coalition of over 1,100 organizations who do major advocacy work on preserving and revitalizing the coastlines in our region and specifically take a critical and primary role of leadership in dealing in New York's harbors response to sea level rise and coastal storms. So if you're not aware of them, get aware of them. Um, in April, just they, they, they briefed us on what had happened this past year, but the significance in April, the Alliance sent a letter to de Blasio identifying their budget priorities for resiliency and environmental measures. And a week later, the mayor, the mayor proposed a budget that included permanent funding for the mayor's office of climate resiliency, which is the agency responsible for the lower Manhattan coastal resiliency plans. So EPC, our committee will be reviewing this letter in the coming months. And as we progress in city-wide budget review, CB1 office staff will set up meetings with relevant agencies to discuss the budget as it relates to environmental protection issues. 
Uh, the next thing, uh, the battery. Oh, I don't know if I was I would, wasn't looking at the slides particularly, <laughs> Diana. But moving right along, the battery of Park City ball fields resiliency. Um, the construction on this interim measure begins now and should be completed in October. The authority's main concern is safety and impacting on field play as little as possible. The vast majority of the work is promised to be done on the field exteriors along Warren, Murray, and West Streets on the outer side of the fencing. On the fields themselves, there is some project fencing, but it's arranged between the downtown Little League's temporary outfield fencing and the ball fields exterior fencing all beyond the field of play and arranged so as not to interfere with the batting cages and bullpen warm up areas behind the downtown Little League's outfield fencing. This morning, as the BPCA promised, a site walk was conducted with the downtown Little League leadership to identify potential on field viewing areas for spectators as opposed to their current viewing area outside the exterior fencing. And this should be confirmed by the end of this week. I just want to know what that means, though, for the public. They need to understand that the, side, the sidewalk areas on Murray, Western Warren are impacted. So the community needs to understand you won't be able to look into the fields from uh, those places surrounding and sidewalk access will be extremely limited. Yeah, I had asked for a visual, but we didn't get that. Um, so, uh, lastly, in the interest of time, speeding up uh, the 250 Water Street update on the Brownfield cleanup program, which um, Diana had given, was um, simply that the New York State Department of Environmental Conservation has not yet received the remedial action work plan from Langen HHC, but is expecting to receive it soon. After the agencies review the plan and edits are made, it will be released to the public for a 45 day comment period. This can be extended as it was for the last comment period. It's anticipated that there will be a 6 month approximate from where we are today in the process to when there is a final remedial action work plan. The Manhattan Borough president is no negotiating with HHC to renew the contract of the independent community consultant, Laura Taj, in time for the review of the draft remedial action working plan. And lastly, with regard to the sinkhole that's appeared, and yet another one on the 250 Water Street lot, Rafi Alam, project manager of DEC's Environmental Remediation Bureau, said the department is working with HHC Langen on having the parking lot repaired and anticipates the middle of a work plan to repair the parking lot no later than next week. Both DEC and DOH will review the work plan upon receipt with the anticipation of being able to approve it sometime in the first half of June. That's it. Thanks. Awesome. Any questions? Alice, that was, that was so fast and comprehensive. It was a bit insane, but thank you. Um, let's, uh, Justine. Okay, battery, <laughs> battery Park City. I think you might need to get need to be muted. There you go. Thank you, Tammy. All right. So for the Battery Park City Committee, first we had a um, introduction to the new um, community liaisons at Brook, Brookdale, which is the. Um, assisted living facility in the North Battery Park City, Maureen Murphy and Andrew Eck came and presented and introduced themselves. They would like to get involved with community projects and community, um, anything that's going on in the community. So anybody who has something going on, they wanted to support a, a, a um, one of the little leagues or the soccer teams, they, they want to get involved. So Trisha perhaps maybe reach out. I'm not sure who else would reach out, but um, I believe they gave their information to Lucian and they would like to connect with folks on the community board and figure out how they can be participants, especially as things open up after COVID. Um, we got updates from Brookfield about what they're doing on the plaza, on the upper seating area of the plaza, seating in the winter garden. Um, anybody who's walked past there, they see they've got a little putt putt green in front of, of the uh, winter garden down, down from where the skating rink was. Uh, what else did we talk about? Um, Ready BPC was an introduction and discussion from Kevin McCabe, who is the chief resilience officer for the Battery Park City Authority now. And he came and said that they're setting up a organization, Ready BPC, that sounded quite similar to me that uh, to what CERT was doing. And um, more to come on that, they just have as an idea, but it's just something that's going to be out there. Um, and then we just had a big, rather robust discussion 
about the Battery Park City Authority finances. I talked about it a little bit in the last month's meeting. And then we also are talking about ground rent. We've had presentations by the Battery Alliance, which is a new group of representing condominium owners in Battery Park City, as well as at a different um, meeting, we've had, re we've had representations and presentations from the Homeowners Coalition, which also represents the 18 condominiums within Battery Park City, the residential buildings. Um, I'm, for the sake of time, I'm not going to go into it all. I am hoping to be able to have a resolution to present next month. Um, and we are looking to give support to the affordability for condominium owners, and I'll cut it out with that. Thank you. Thank you very much, Justine. I don't see any hands up. Um, if you have questions, you can definitely email both uh, Alice and Justine, who graciously went very quickly. Betty, I think you're the last, so do what you can, and then we're going to do that one for 140, and that will be the roll call. Actually, great. Then you can move on to the next slide because really getting on to the resolution. This is the central business district tolling program, known more commonly as congestion pricing. Uh, and I'm just going to review the therefore be it resolved statements. Uh, this committee and working group worked for months on this. And I want to thank them all for that. If you go to the next one, we can see the product of all that time. Uh, the first therefore be it resolved really is that that we support the goals of reducing congestion transit uh, supporting transportation and reducing carbon emissions however many board members felt that the program as defined in the legislation is unacceptable without changes that include lo larger financial burden being taken by the government next one of the second Therefore, be it resolved that elected officials work to expand non MTA options because, again, congestion pricing is just for the MTA, that such as making the streetscapes better for pedestrians, building bicycle infrastructure, and integrating all the transportation because likely things are going to be multimodal. Make it easy for people to do that as an option. I want to make non driving effective and pleasant for them. Next one. And the real meat of it all, I guess, is the various requests, and this is not all of them. This is asking the Triborough Bridge Tolling Authority and the Transportation uh, Mobility Review Board, those are the ones that are going to be making the real decisions about and running the program, to exempt all residents from the tolling zone, of the tolling zone from being charged, to deny exemptions to New York City employees, to exempt taxis and for hire vehicles when the congestion surcharges that they collect exceed the tolling daily tolling amount. Identify other funding sources for the MTA. Again, you've heard there, that was one of the things they wanted. Uh, safeguard the personal privacy of drivers. Have some low cost travel times, which would be variable tolling. I have reduced rates for motorcycles and mopeds because they are only two wheel or smaller devices. Have transportation options before available before congestion pricing program begins so that people have options to it. And I will actually, because I know Tammy in the past, you've had a comment about how to proceed with this before voting. So there's a couple of things I want everybody to understand. This is months and months, maybe even a year's worth of work. If you haven't read this, Bad on you. I'm just saying it flat out there. The amount of work that has been done on this is extraordinary. You don't have to agree with it. You don't have to vote for it. You don't have to vote against it. You vote as your conscience comes. This is everything over the course of the months that everybody worked on. I will honestly say that there are definitely things in here that the chairs of this committee do not like. There are things in here that the chairs of the committee do like. I'm not going to specify who likes what and what likes what. You've read it. We've sent it. We've had a lot of engagement. Please do not make this a two hour argument when you didn't go to the committee to have something to say. And I know that sounds rather curt, but there's been a ton of work done on this. And if you really, really, really wanted to have your opinion in, you should have 
been in the trenches. Okay, with that comment, Michael Francoeur and hey. Bruce. Thanks, Tammy, and thanks, Betty. I, I do, as co-chair of the Transportation Committee, do wanna just echo what Tammy and Betty just said. Uh, this is a complex, controversial, like topic that we went through in committee over months, over many meetings, and we handled it with uh, thought, nuance, uh, and everyone was really respectful. So I just wanted to thank everyone who came to those task force meetings, all our committee meetings, uh, and I do want to thank Betty because you did Betty did a lot of research, really put together slides that helped us get to this point by point uh, resolution. Um, and I, I'll try not to go into too much detail. I, I do just want to say, yeah, as, as Tammy alluded to, I did vote against this in committee and I'm going to be voting no on it again tonight. Uh, the main point that I had an issue with was the uh, it's the first uh, it's the first bullet on the last whereas, which is exempting all residents from the tolling zone. Uh, and the reason why I ended up that that's, I think, big to me is because the way our conversations in committee went and in our resolution is we're looking at there are real benefits to congestion pricing and we are actually really well positioned in community board one to benefit from them. Uh, we have, you know, we want. And we want to say yes to all these, right? And we try to. We want to say yes to better funding for public transportation because uh, we're trying to revive our business district. And without, you know, a strong subway, we can't do that. Uh, we want uh, less traffic so that our residents, uh, businesses, taxis, uh, commuters don't have to sit in traffic, and my ears don't have to hear the honking. <laughs> uh, and you know, we want a more sustainable neighborhood. We we sit through hours of meetings every month talking about how we're literally raising the shoreline of Manhattan. Uh, and, and we want less air pollution too. Uh, and all of these are things that we can get with congestion pricing. And so, yes, there are costs there. And I, I, I definitely hear the concerns that we, that, that are brought up in our committee um, about you know, fairness, about paying for the roads. Um, but I do think that the resolution as it is written now sends the wrong message. It's, it's, it's saying, you know, hey, we like all these things, but we don't wanna pay for them. Uh, we, I think it's important to note, represent some of the wealthiest neighborhoods in, in Manhattan, uh, in New York City, and hey, the, the country, actually. We have some of the wealthiest zip codes in the country. And so to try to weaken uh, this bill in the way that we're trying to now, I think says, you know, you know, this, this, the pros aren't worth it. Uh, and uh, yeah, I don't think that's the right message to send uh, today. So thanks. Okay, so next after Michael was Nicole, Bruce. Bruce, yeah, uh, hi. Uh, I just want to say that I have had great trepidation about louder, Bruce. Ah, uh, you can't hear me. Can you hear me? Yes, yeah, loud and clear. So oh, just so, turn your volume up. Uh, I just want to say that I had great trepidation about this resolution for many months. And having read it through, I think it's, I don't know, a stroke of genius. I mean, you've covered everything, including annotations, footnotes, bibliography. I don't know how you did it. Uh, it's inclusive. I agree with every point. And I say bravo. And I can't stay much longer at this meeting because I'm about to fall under the and desk. Stop, and stop Sometimes. talking. Let's go to somebody else. Okay. Thank you. Uh, we're going to go Francis, Rosa, Alice, Mark, Justine, Jeff. Francis, okay. Uh, just a quick question. Um, has there been any feedback uh, about the effects of COVID, uh, the pandemic itself on, on the transportation issue? Absolutely no effect. In their plans, all plans are based on what was done. No, no, no. I, I, actually, I'm not asking my question right, but I don't want to. I, you know, uh, has the environment cleared up? Has there been less uh, uh, road disruptions? Uh, are the streets better? Uh, you know, any any in those areas? Has there been any kind of uh, notice of uh, difference? Any kind of significant difference? in air quality or anything? There are many reports of it that said yes, but it doesn't have any bearing on this because okay. 
all the planning and all the budgeting was done pre COVID and will be applicable post COVID once the emergency. Okay. Order. I'm just curious. All right, I'm to get back to important questions. No, no, yours is important. I wish that they just, yes, it has had a positive effect because there were less people on the roads and less people in the water and less boats and less people outside. Okay. Um, I think Rosa was next, right? Yes, thank you. Um, my question is, what is the ramification of voting yes? And what is the ramification of voting no? Like what happens next with this thing? I'm gonna ask Lucian to take that one because we will be submitting this to all the elected and the governor and the commission for when it is formed. Lucian? I would say that the um, there's two main points being made here. Um, one is just uh, the the larger, broader point is that um, the, the conditions need to be uh, made as as, um, uh, as as good as possible for people to use alternatives. Um, the narrower point is that um, the the communities the community board is asking that. Uh, the residents, uh, those who live within the congestion zone, the tolling zone, um, do not feel the impacts of the toll. As you know, I, I think the the point that or the the, the justification is that uh, they can't help but be in uh, uh, you know, subjected to those tolls for any movement they make with their vehicle. There's no avoiding the zone. So, <clears throat> so. I think that it, the the committee uh, attempted to make a, a, a resolution that was not um, opposing the principle of congestion pricing, uh, but uh, clearly wanted to. The the resolution clearly is looking to uh, create that that special carve out. Um, also of note, the resolution um, makes it clear that municipal employees are to not receive carve outs um, and there's some other different modes that are, are kind of called out for um, this or that. But I think that's the, the larger point. Uh, I'm sorry. If, I think if you, you were to say no, me. if you were to vote it, no, the, the yeah. community board would would not uh, issue any opinion uh, to be considered by the transportation review board. So, you. You know. so if we vote, no, it dies here. Or, That's right. or our opportunity to speak on it dies here. And if well, we vote yes, then we're we're basically <laughs> saying, you know, yes, but with these conditions. Yes, we're we're saying this is this is our opinion with these conditions. <laughs> but if we vote no, so it's sort of like throwing the baby out with the bathwater. Well, but but there's no right now. There's no uh, the transportation review board has not been convened. No one's been appointed. And it's not clear what the timeline is, so we are. We are um, well ahead of the game in terms of making opinion. So. Technically, Does that speaking, mean it's not our only chance to 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 opine, but. It, ah. So, but it, this particular opinion would would not move forward. Then, then may I ask to the transportation committee um, folks, if this one is not passed, then would you go back and rework it to then have one that could pass? Or would this basically die because you've been working on it for a year? And this is the best that that more people than less people could agree to on on the committee. Because uh, I think that I guess no. my point is that I think that there are a lot of really strong points here, but I also. Um, Disagree with some points, and so I'm wondering. I, I think it's important for CB1 to have a say in this, but the question is whether you guys have it in you to, you know, keep going to refine it further, or if you're just going to say no, this is the best we could do, and and that's it. Rosa, I'll put it a different way. The, the, there may not be a one month or sixty day timeline. To get the uh, to get something in, but if the committee had to take the same amount of time to produce a second resolution, then certainly uh, that would 
that would probably blow past any kind of um unless they were to turn something around in one month then you know there's a likelihood that a new opinion wouldn't be formed in time because this took six months to to kind of piece together of course a lot of that was learning and exploring the issues um and then you know really tweaking the language uh but uh, it, it was it was a, a very involved process that um, is, isn't exactly nimble. Michael and Betty, if this was um, voted down, would you take it up again? I think it As really a direct depends. Question. Yeah. Now, uh, if it was voted down for the reason that some members are voting it down to show there's a big uh, broader support for that opinion in the wider committee than there is in the working group and transportation committee, it might certainly be worth looking at. But I think there are only limited points where there's contention. Uh, and so if that, that could swing, if the broader committee said, you know what, we don't believe in exemptions for all residents of the tolling zone, we believe in this. Could, could then, I, I'm just trying to figure out which way I want to vote, um, and I'm sorry this is taking so long, and I know that it's late, so I apologize. But what are the specific, you know, few points that were the major points of contention that would be under review? Because I do think I agree with a lot of the points, but there are a couple of points that do bother me. I think the one to point out is the first one here, exempt all residents. When nobody okay. else in the city is getting an exemption, even though they may be coming here for a job or whatever else, and they're also New York City residents. We also don't know what the other community boards have asked for. Right. We can't say that no one else is getting because we don't know yet. It is as we've discussed in committee, it is a point of negotiation, right? You and and you ask for what you ask for, knowing that you will get hopefully some of what you get for, but you don't know what everybody else is asking for and that's part and parcel rosa is that we have not opined on any of it it doesn't mean right. that we can't change it later it doesn't mean but this is the first foray out and we do need to opine somehow whether you agree or not with everything that is your choice but we do i'm gonna let the next person go because we have to okay. get everyone i apologize Understood. okay next Who is next? I don't know. I don't, I don't know, Tammy. I was just going to say thank you to to uh, to Betty and to Michael and Michael. I really appreciated your comments, and uh, you know it's a tremendous piece of work to the committee. Just bravo and thank you. Okay, great. Next, uh, oof, again, if if you d please, let's not talk just for the sake of talking. If we have important stuff to go, because this has been a year's worth of work. So, um, Joe Lerner, Mimi, Colin. I'm trying to call people who weren't on the committee. Yes. Um, many times I've stood at the corner of Fulton and Broadway and noticed traffic patterns. And anyone who does that, they will know that congestion does not originate in our district the cars the vehicles the buses the limos they're outside our district and they're coming into our district and that's why i think we who live here should get an exemption uh, thank you very much thank you joe thank you. appreciate it next mimi uh maybe you were on the committee weren't you yeah yeah I'm going to hold you to the end. I'm trying to get people who are not on the committee to get some kind of uh, diversity in. So sure. I apologize about that. Uh, Paul Goldstein, Kathy Gupta, you are not on the committee. And Joe, please put your hand down. Thank you. I would just say I agree with the comments that you made, Tammy, and that uh, Bruce made, that this is a very well thought out, balanced, um recommendation that took many many months and i think we should generally speaking abide by the committee's recommendations and on this uh contentious issue of exempting residents i would just point out to people that 
in many of the other cities where this came about well before us, such as London, that was exactly the model that they put into effect and it's worked very well there, exempting the residents. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. Kathy Gupta. I, um, first, I'd like to thank the committee for their work. Uh, second, I want to make a point. Um, for those who have hesitancy about exempting all residents and exempting taxis, uh, we have not historically had a great hospital infrastructure downtown. And we're now at a point where we have many residents with 9-11 related conditions and a growing senior population. And I think at a point in your life when you're having to access, you know, access specialized medical care, which currently is uptown, um, having to pay those extra surcharges is really a hardship. And, you know, if there's any doubt in your mind or something that might sway you, I'd ask you to think of that, especially in regard to the 9-11 impacted health population. Thank you, Kathy. Uh, please take your hand down, Paul. Please take your hand down. Uh, and let's see. I know Justine was on the committee. Mark was on the committee. Mitch and Mimi. Jeff Myhoff, you were not on the committee. Go ahead. Um, is it me? It's you, Mr. Myhoff. So I, I have two points. One is. Um, I guess I'm just concerned that if this is such a weighty matter, why we're talking about it at the very, very, very end of the meeting, that might be a technical answer, but it seems like the wrong timing to start at 10 o'clock and something that's of such weight. So is there a quick answer for that? Absolutely. We needed to make sure you were all awake in here, and this has been before the board three times already. This is the final resolution. Notes were reviewed last month and several months before. So the work has come to this board many times. This should not be the initial review that people are reading it. This should be the final that people have already in their heads know where they're going. Okay, um, but it's still being brought up at the very end of the meeting. It just seems like bad timing. Um, but I would just say also, and with all due respect to you, Tammy, I don't think it's your role as the chair of our board and at all appropriate to tell us how we should conduct ourselves in questioning something we're voting on. I think it's completely inappropriate for you to do that. Um, and to me, it's a pattern I'm seeing, and I'm really distressed by it. So, thank you. You're welcome. Okay, who else was not on the committee who would like to speak? Colin. <laughs> um, I deserve whatever's coming my way because I was not involved in this, and I apologize. But the original point of London, and this will be friendly, I will not step on a beehive again. The original point of London was to encourage hybrid and EV cars from entering downtown London. Was that considered as part of this? Betty? Cool. International was looked at, but I want to remind people too that London is looking currently to redo theirs. So I wouldn't use them highly as an example at this point when even they see huge problems with theirs. I, I definitely don't want to fight, but if there's any friendliness towards the, I, I am so late on this, I'm sorry, and I, it's my fault, but. If there's any friendliness towards the idea of encouraging EV and hybrid uh, by not charging them, I would love for that to be a friendly amendment. Otherwise, I'm not going to fight it. My fault. Uh, the problem is congestion, and they don't solve that problem at all. Well, they, they solve the air quality issue, but okay. Okay, now we're going to go through those who were on the committee. Uh, we're going to go to Mitch. <laughs> Uh, Mimi, we're going to go M, 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 and J. So it'll be Mitch, Mimi, Mark, and Justine. Thank you. Uh, Lucian, could you please pull up the first uh, slide that you put up from the, at the beginning? You're on number three now. There was some wording that I remember not to be kind of what we agreed at the committee. Diana, can you back up the slides? The slide number one. Where, where it said at the very beginning, where it said, uh, 
while while many other committee we all agree on the the goals of you know clean air and all that stuff it was it was in black the first thing you showed in black it was two slides back yeah the, the, yeah that's right there you go okay so correct me if i'm wrong lucian but however many board members and we believe that you said that the government a larger financial burden which is implying you know semi congestion pricing with the government maybe like uh, like uh, subsidizing part of it that's not what we came to agree at the meeting it was for those many board members that agreed with the goals of the uh, reducing traffic congestion improving transit blah 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 but we felt that it was the government's responsibility especially at this time that's you know to to finance that not take a larger financial burden and i i feel that when i say you i don't mean you personally i feel like whoever like you, you kind of spun those words of what our agreement was at the meeting to like kind of like make it like well we can have a little of both and that's not what those many board members like uh it should be uh, it, uh is unacceptable however many board members believe that the program as defined in the legislation is unacceptable uh, as the uh, the financial burden should be being taken by the government that's what i remember that we agreed upon on when we we, we uh and then we we worded it then not that you know without changes that includes a larger financial burden so i would propose to do what we said at the meeting is unacceptable uh uh Without that, that uh, what I just said is unacceptable. May I say is unacceptable without the government taking on the financial burden. Thank you. That that's exactly what we decided at the meeting, and and that's what the words were supposed to be. Uh, yeah, Mitch is right about that. That's correct. So if we can if we can re, uh, re, if we can put it the way that we we agreed at the meeting what we you know we spent hours and hours and like I said Betty did a wonderful job uh, uh, you know putting everything together but uh, that, that, that this spin is not what we agreed upon so if we can do what uh, what uh, Justine just said that would be uh, exactly what we had at the meeting Justine can you repeat that one more time please well can I point something out. What yeah. she is saying and what they're saying now was also not accepted. And that was that if the government's taking the full payment, then you're asking them to take back the law because you're saying no yes. congestion pricing. Be program. Betty, Betty, we, Betty so, so, yes, that we, is what we're saying. At the meeting, you're right, changing. But then this whole all has to be changed to say that we completely no, disagree no, with we the agree program. What I'm sorry for I'm sorry for raising my voice. It's like it's like we I don't like when the history is rewritten. We spent many hours on it, and what Justine just said was exactly what we came to agree that we would put in the first therefore be it resolved. Every, that that was it that was like black and white. You know, and, and, and we wrote it, we wrote it out. I mean I Betty, I know you don't like it, but this is what we voted Mark, on. Mark, do not let Mitch continue. Okay. If getting the answer, please. It's late. Let's find some decorum. Okay. Don't cross yell. I and appreciate I'm, it. If, if 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 I'm one percent incorrect, I apologize. But I'm 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 ninety nine point nine percent correct that the words that Justine said was the the exact words that we put into that, and then we all agreed upon it at the meeting. I think I I'm, wanna, I. I don't remember it exactly that way. Just so you know, uh, you know, I, I I'm curious to hear other people from the committee, but I don't remember it exactly that way. I do remember saying that we wanted the government to take a larger financial burden, but not all the burden because it cut everything off, and that wasn't where we were going. Yeah, I, I, I uh, well, like yeah. I said, I, 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 I heard. All right, anything? I'm not talking about opinion. I'm, I'm, I'm talking about yeah. the words that we use. So I, I think, all right. There's other people who are also there, so let's let's kind of go around and see, right? So that was, uh, okay. Mimi, so who's Mimi. next? Mimi. Mimi, thank you. Hi, everybody. Um, yeah, we worked really hard on this. I um, I'm gonna go with whatever word in regards to what Mitch was talking about. I, I would be happy to go with whatever wording we actually voted for in committee. Um, what I want to talk about right now is compromise. 
we made a lot of compromises in this. We put a lot of work into this. And we put a lot of compromises. Did you talk about a lot of money? Oh, sure. Yeah. I'll like pick up my computer and yell into it. <laughs> but like the, even if you don't agree with a lot of it, or I mean, eh, or 50, 50, if you're like 50, 50 on this, like that is where com compromise comes in because you do agree with a lot of it. And we are probably not going to have another chance to say anything about this. So I feel that. I would like to encourage you to vote yes on this because we have put a lot of work into it. Um, you know, I, I would appreciate the faith and that's, that's what we do here. We, we create compromise in committees. So anyway, thanks. Love you guys. Thank you, Mimi. Well said, well said. Mark, did I get you already? Okay. Um, <clears throat> What Mitch said uh, is ab absolutely true. We, this was a, a point that we went over and over again many times. We worked a year on this. Uh, and it's not like we, we did the resolution la a month ago. Uh, we had one committee meeting a month ago, and now it's the full board meeting, and people come uh, chiming in, nitpicking on every little piece of it. You should have at least come to a few committee meetings over the last 12 months. To uh to try and help out to see what your points are. We can in the debate the nitty gritty of this now after a year and you never showed up once. Uh, with that being said, uh, someone mentioned about the medical issues. Uh, that was also a point that came up. Mary Amory brought that up. A few other people brought that up about all a lot of these places are uptown now, and that burden should not be placed on downtown residents. Um, again, what Mitch said and how it was worded by Justine. Uh, we went over this in nauseam, and it just seems like that this way it's written now is just being a little bit creative to try and sneak in something that Mark, wasn't said. Mark, oh. we're, I'm trying to take a look back at past docs, so oh. I, I hear where you're going. I've heard what both of you. Have it said. was written in the um, mostly in the in the uh, chats to uh, to. Um, would have ended up. It, it would have so, ended up in some of the points. That's what I'm right. trying to look. So, at. so um, I'm looking. So, I'm looking. and and w regards to this about government funding, we, we a lot. This came up a lot too, uh, and Justine could probably put it better than I can. We felt that the MTA, it, it's incompetence, corruption, it's waste of money. Uh, if they actually ran the place properly. It wouldn't need this congestion pricing money, and that's all it's about. It's about it's about the money, and we we felt strongly about that. Most of us did. I know the chairs didn't, but you know there's only two chairs, and then there's the rest of the committee who mostly felt this way, and that's why it, the resolution is written as it was, uh, despite what, how the chairs felt. Because there's more than two. People. Mark, do you have anything else to add? That's new or different than what Mitch. Well, I, what I just said is new. So, uh, so the thing is, is that you you can vote no on it, and we and we don't get any comments. You, no one's going to agree on everything here, and and the committee felt very strongly that residents should not be burdened with the ineptitude and corruption of the MTA in the city. The government should pay for it. Okay, that brings me to Mariama and then Justine and then back to Jeff, unless Jeff takes his hands down. Um, Mimi, if you are done, please take your hand down. I appreciate that. Uh, Mariama? Yeah, I, I agree with uh, Kathy Gupta at a thousand percent. Um, we are one big like cancer cluster down here uh, at this point. And all of the specialized hospitals in that area are above 60th Street. They're all like 60 to 70th Street, York Avenue, First Avenue. We have no choice but to leave the neighborhood for this health care. They could have given us our own centers. They have not. You know, I, I, I lived here my whole life and we've always had this hospital. In fact, we lost hospitals. We lost like St. Vincent's and stuff. We didn't get new ones. So this is where we are, um, and it's disgusting that it wouldn't be considered. Also, I agree with Mark 
10,000%. There were like 10 people, literally like 10 people attacked in the train the other day. And reports are showing not that there are less cars on the street, but that there are more cars on the street because no one wants to go down in that subway unless they have to. Other reports have also shown that the people who tend to own cars tend to be people with more money. But the way that it was read also indicated that if, if because so many people are on the on the streets and Uber keeps uh, and Lyft keep adding on fees because they are in quote in quote high demand, if you can at all avoid going into the subway, people are doing it. No one wants to go into the subway right now. It is dangerous because of COVID. People are unmasked. It is dangerous Aaron, because of tax. Does that all, all that said? Yeah, bring, bring to, get home, please. I am. I mean, I am voting to support the resolution because we did work a long time on compromise. Um, but yes, we, we spent a lot of time. We were at that meeting till almost 11 o'clock. We spent a lot of time wording it just so to say we don't like this, a majority of us. Um, and we do think the government should be footing the bill exactly what I was talking if it's about necessary. Before. That's what we're that, that, to. Mitch is right. That's all. Thank you. Okay, my turn. Your turn, Justine. I will try to be brief. First of all, I have to say what an amazing job of uh, cooperation and collaboration, Betty and Michael allowed to be happening in this committee because we did not agree. You need to go on mute. We did not agree. We still are having issues and I know they don't agree with this part in particular. So the fact that we were able to get to a resolution that we could vote on and move forward, just kudos to them for, for just handling this so well. And I cannot praise them enough for it all because this really truly was it is and was an exercise in compromise. That said, two suggestions here one would be just put a period after the word unacceptable and get rid of the, the rest of it or what i think we did say in committee which is what i said unacceptable without the government taking on the burden the financial burden being taken on by that's the government. what we said and and that's what we is what we said because the point that we wanted to say what, what we agreed to and what made us compromise was we do need to opine on this issue we need to be the community board just, needs to speak however the only way we could get ourselves to the point of speaking as a committee was to make our step make it known that we just disagree with the whole darn thing thank you however what i also remember because we did have a discussion in committee was that we did not talk about a new tax right who pays the government the right we, we, we pay so we didn't talk about a new tax because basically the conversation went around in a circle. If you remember this, basically Mark had said is a new tax, right? Ostensibly it is, and you're getting credits for it in the back end. So I, um, only those who make less than $60,000 a year, get the credit as written. Mm -hmm. uh, right. we don't, uh, but, we, but it, there's also still nebulous stuff in there that we don't know. But the right. question is on this, I actually remember that it was the legislation is unacceptable as is, but I didn't, I thought the, I thought the conversation was a larger financial burden, not the whole thing, because if it's the whole thing, then you're going, we had talked about, then you're going to get taxed somewhere else added. The money is not coming straight from the government. And that was made perfectly clear in the budget and where this is going. So then, I understand where you're all going. I, I, I hear your, I, I, I'll leave Betty to say something. If, if the word is believe the program as defined in the legislation is unacceptable, period. That's not what we, what we said was what, what Justine said, the, the last thing is unacceptable without the the financial burden being taken by the government. And that's why all of us approved this resolution for compromise, because there was other things in here that we didn't agree with, but it, because, like I said, Betty and Michael did a wonderful job. And so there were things that none of us agreed with totally on both sides. But because we put that language in at the end of the meeting, at almost 11 o'clock, then everybody else agreed to it. Myriana, myself, Justine, right. everybody so else. 
we, be, I'm because a parliamentarian, because we're going to have to go back and listen to the last recorded bits of the meeting, right? Uh, Unless there's somebody else who, you know, who has something on it. Because, I was the one that made the suggestion, and and then all the other people that, that 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 said, you know, I agreed, I agreed with Mitch. So like, I didn't write anything, but that's I'm I'm, you know, like I said, I, I don't want to say a hundred percent. The meetings are recorded, so it's not that okay. big of a deal, right? You know, we can always go back. That's the yes, beauty yeah. of it. Okay, you know, Tammy. My, can I say that what the issue was, because I recall this too, and I think Tammy's really correct. It definitely was said by the people who are talking. That in fact they did think that the government should take 100% responsibility. At that point, Tammy brought up if we're telling them to take back the law, which would be difficult since it's part of the 2019 budget, that we couldn't opine on anything because the and I asked, so you want this resolution to say take back the law? We it is not adequate. It is unacceptable. We. No, no, no. You, you, tax, wait yes. one second. As soon as you say taxes pay 100%, there is no program. We, no, the, the there's no answer. program. Oh my, you, you, now we're re-debating this. The words yes. that we agreed upon was what Justine said, and, and, and that's what we agreed upon. We said that, that the tax, that's not our problem to apply the tax and how they get it. Like maybe some, you know, something else will come up. We even joked like, let them, let them add a vice tax or whatever. But yeah. we, we said we're, that's not our purview to talk about how they're gonna get the money or how, if they're gonna spend it efficiently or not. It was just, it's unacceptable without the financial burden being taken by the government because there was a, many of us on the committee that believe that that's, you know, one and, of the, that pro government. And, and we agreed to this, and I think what made it go forward is yes. because it was just saying that many board members believed. Not so. All. So okay. Should this so here's allow where, us to go on to the next one. Stop. Here's where. Here's we're late. I'm going to table this. I'm going to motion to table. I'm going to send it back to committee. As much as I hate to do this, but I'm not going to sit here and have this discussion again. We're just going to go back to committee. We'll listen to the recording again, and then it'll come back for the full board in June. That's the only way this is going to be resolved because I, the parliament, I can't, we can't be at a point in a therefore be it resolved to be arguing over and not coming to some kind of a consensus that this is not what we said this is what what we said there seems to be a disconnect so this is a major portion of it because we're not getting there so i'm i want to i want to stop the discussion i'm going to send it back to committee one more time because we're we're not making any progress here is that Stop. I made a motion. Alice Blank seconded. But I thought that we were doing this because we had to tonight. I thought we couldn't take it. We well, you know, in every the legislature, the legislature stops June 10th. So if nobody's willing to go down this road and no one's willing to have this and, and we're going to sit here and argue over this, then we will not be in that point. I just don't know where else to go on this. We're not we're arguing, just, Tammy. We're we, not arguing. We, we're just asking you to maybe go back and play the record. Can we do we that? All that's to all this, it needs Tammy. to be. We all agreed to this, and that's why we all agreed to support it even though there were things that say Justine or Mark or Mariana didn't like in, in the thing, but we all agreed for the compromise, like what Mimi said, that we all compromised. And that last words that that we added in the therefore be it resolved in number one was the icebreaker that got all of us to agree to support this resolution. And Tammy, you've heard, you've heard six committee members saying what, what, uh, what Justine said is what happened. So it should just be corrected yeah. that way and let's vote on it. It's not there's a second in motion on the floor right now. Say what's that? There is a second in motion on the floor right now. And we just uh, it should just be that simple. I mean, how many more people do you need? I mean, we're all saying the same thing and we and we hardly ever agree on a lot of stuff. So yeah, that's a that's I mean, a very so, strong point, Mark. So I mean so let's just get it done, please. We're gonna vote on this motion because I, I don't know. I, I honestly don't know what else to do because I've got the chair who says that's not the way it is. The co chair. I mean, let's you want to take a straw poll of the committee, but I don't think that I don't remember that being what the committee said. 
again, it's not about what I remember or not. It's what I'm hearing. And I'm hearing four people, five people tell me that's not what it is. Mariama did not opine about this. It's Mitch, Mark, and Justine who are all saying that. Mimi also, said, Mimi also agreed that that's what it was said. And if you want to ask Mariana. No, I, no, I do. I do agree because and, and it was and it was specifically many people on the board because that was Detta's point of contention. She didn't want it to say all or whatever, but, but right. she, but she agreed remember. that the majority of us felt that way. And so we settled on many members. Right. Detta brought that up. Mariama, the question is not whether many of the board, it is the question of whether or not it, the government is not taking a quote, larger financial burden, but is taking all of the financial burden. That is the question that is being argued. And what we said was that many of the members felt that that is the way it should be, but like a big exactly. but, 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 you know, we want, we want to make our, our feelings known, but the rest of them, we, we're supporting this. Yeah, because bottom line is, if in fact, many members of the board are outvoted by the entities that are enacting this law and the mayor and everybody else, we'd like to be heard. The board would like to be heard and the other people on our committee need to have a say in what's going on. Lucian, Lucian does this stay as a therefore be it resolved or should it move up to a whereas? I think it's actually is a whereas. It says there. Let take a look. It does not. If it is a whereas, then I'm in fantastic shape and we can call the vote. Doesn't make, you know. Well, you, I guess you have to sort of remove the motion to. to just I would have it. to remove the motion. And I'm fine with it, but I will say that we really do need to move forward on this. I'm really imploring that the board really move forward on this in some exactly. way. Exactly. So, yes, I agree. Let's let's, let's, it's not a whereas. Let's go. It's not a whereas. It's a therefore be resolved. Right. We all want to move forward. We just want the language to be what we voted at, at, the, at the meeting. And, this and is what it is. Yeah. 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 yeah we shouldn't and have to go through this. What this, this happens sometimes way too often. This is why Mark, let's just make decisions and move on. Let's well, not. Yeah, well, let's Tammy, please. Tammy, you've heard. What it should say and what, it, what we agreed on, what we voted on at the very end of the meeting. Fix the language on what Justin said, and let's vote on it because it's wrong. The way it is now, it's incorrect. That was not what was agreed on. Yeah, I have to agree. If it was just my recollection alone, I would back off. But it's five of us now on this call. And we definitely just vote on whether we want to change the language as these people are suggesting. No, we're not. No, it can't be. It can't be a vote. It's not an amendment. The language is incorrect. All right. So Please. then, to stop the parliamentarian, call the question. I made a motion. It was seconded. Question is, do we table this or do we vote on it? That's really the motion because I made a motion and it was seconded. Correct. So, can I ask you, Tammy? Does that mean? No, Mitch. The no, parliamentarian. Procedure. Asked, I'm not. I'm not arg arguing. I'm asking procedurally. And the floor is closed. When there's a motion on the floor, yeah. the floor is closed. I think not you have to vote on a motion. Well, okay. then, then, then you can't withdraw it. it. They changed the words. Then uh, okay. Okay. they changed the words. You said we could move to table, right? He did move to table. That is my question. So, and by the way, we can not do that. Michael, if we, if we table it, then two people in effect take away the entire board's ability to weigh in on something that's time sensitive. Completely ridiculous. It was such a premature move to table. Well, yes. because uh, let me tell you something. Late, but time out. Everybody, time out. Time out. A motion on the floor, a motion to table is not debatable. But if, if it's been seconded, we shouldn't even be having any debate on it. Well, it's not Let's on. just put it down and move on. <laughs> if you if you vote no on the motion to table, it remains in play to be considered tonight. 
No two and people can, can a motion to table be withdrawn, Patrick, or no? Patrick, you're going in and out. We can't hear you. So Please repeat. he said that I could withdraw the motion to table. I'm going to withdraw the motion to table. I'm going back. Okay, sorry, Alice. I'm going back to Michael Francoeur, who just pulled up the YouTube. All right, and sent it to Lucian. Sent it to a few of you guys. I didn't get everybody, but if you want to check, I, I and apologize for being quiet. I was trying to look at the YouTube. I, I'm fine yeah. with. Please, no. Lucian, screen share what Michael Francoeur just sent you. Well, I'll believe you, Tammy, if he just says it. I don't need to see it. Nope. It, for public discretion, it is the YouTube public. I want it out there so everybody sees it because oh it's been a God. contentious argument. Just share the screen. It's the last end of the meeting with the wording and the translation on below. Who am I giving screen share to? Is that Michael Francoeur? Uh, it could be Michael Francoeur. It could be Lucian, either one. Okay, give it to me, Diana. Yeah, to give, it to, give it to me. I got it. Oh, you do? Okay. Yep. Tammy? Oh, Michael, you need to give it to Lucian now because you are a presenter. Tammy, is it possible to move on to the new business and then revert back to this? I mean, it's been five hours now. And this you know. should actually answer the question and put it to rest immediately. So then we can just call the question and take the vote because. Okay. Is, is this the audio from the meeting? Yeah, I think it's Lucian. I think it starts to be at minute 171.33. Yeah, Michael has a screenshot. Yeah, um, I'm sorry. I can. How do I share? Give you the privilege. Uh, you could just. Again? You could go ahead if you have it. Just turn right. share screen. Yeah, let me do that. Thank you. And yeah, I wasn't listening to all of it, but I did just. Let's see. Do you guys see my screen now? We yeah. do. Sweet. Okay. So I think this is at the end of the meeting. Uh, and I, I see this highlighted. Uh, how does this look to everybody? Can't see. It's, it's, it's oh, is small, it? is but it I see small? it highlighted. Yeah. Let me try to zoom in a little bit. And we're talking about this. If where are we at one seventy one point thirty three? We talk about it. It yeah. is. Is yes. that any different than what's in the resolution? Before? No, that is what's it's written, but we're playing with it. Punctuation. Yeah, we were talking and. Yeah, I have the I have the transcript, but I don't know how to share that. So can we look at the words? Um, exactly the same words. I just put a period. No, in. no, no, not this. This is exactly you're correct. This is what was proposed. Right. We talked about it and changed it. Is what my read the transcript, Justine? Well, it wasn't oh. changed uh, after the conversation. A pan that was the problem. It wasn't changed after the conversation. Right. You guys said you were going to change it, at, and because it was so late, it was eleven o'clock, and and then um, we all said that we agreed. Oh. Mitch, if, if I don't want to be the one doing it, if, if you look at one eight, if um, Michael, if you can pull up the the, the transcript itself, one eighty eight, one eighty eight, twenty four, sorry, twenty four, one eighty eight, twenty four. Start around there. Sorry, oh, that's fine. Right there. It's acceptable of change, and that the larger financial burden should be taken on by the okay, government. No. Wait, okay, that's the question. We do not believe that the program is in its, in its current in iteration is acceptable mm. with change and that the law. Okay, we don't, we say that we don't believe this is acceptable. Right. That's what everybody said that they wanted more to pay for stuff. I don't know. I can't read it. Yeah, it seems pretty close to what we have in the current it resolution. Is pretty close. It's just we're taking out the larger financial burden. Mm. What we said was we don't. That that's how I see it, but I could see how it could be interpreted in different ways, Michael. I'll give you that. I could see how it could be interpreted, but I'm, you know, at the point that when when we left it, that that's the point that we were making, and we we felt that everybody agreed to move on because it was already eleven o'clock. But I could mm -hmm. see how it could be interpreted different ways. To be fair, try to one eight nine four two. Okay, but yeah, no, it's in pieces. I'm sorry, I'm looking at two screens right now. As you can see, I'm doing this. Okay, let's uh. see. Sentence with Justine, and then we'll start the sentence with the semicolon. We're talking about punctuation here. We do not believe the program is in 
is acceptable change without and it's a larger Tammy, can I ask a question? Yeah. Is it, I mean, this is clear as mud and we're getting nowhere with this. Is it possible to, t I don't know if it's possible, but is it possible to take a vote of the entire board to determine if people want the greater burden or the entire burden? That to me seems like the quickest way to try and, and resolve this. That sounds fair. I'm fine. I don't know if that's possible. So I'm going to somebody that's not being strong information acceptable without change. Please is, let's do that and move on. You know what though? I might have to just let's just you want to just vote on that as what Andrew just said, and then that'll kind of sim simplify everything. Yeah. That's just do a straw Fine poll. With Fine with me. Andrew, repeat it. I, I guess right. we're asking people to vote for option A, which is. Dean, what did you say? I, I'm thinking that maybe you're right. What I'm seeing here is that maybe this is the language, guys. I'm Listen, Andrew, Andrew had, the, had the perfect point. Option A, and I'll let Andrew go. Yeah, there you go. Let's go with that. But I'm trying to find it, and I cannot find okay. exactly it. It's it's clear as mud, as you Let's say. Just listen to Andrew, please. Is that yeah. the very very end? Okay. So the question is, what do you whether we are loose? Uh, all right. Let's make this into it's a it's a change as to whether it says that it would be the government takes a larger role, right? Or government, yes or no. And the other option would would be they take the whole role. That that's what Andrew said, and and that that that's what the whole thing is. Whether we leave the language as is, a larger role, or the complete financial burden. I think Andrew, if I'm, I don't want to speak for you, but that's what you were re referring to, correct? Yeah, I guess I was proposing a vote a a roll call where we ask people to vote either option one, which is a larger burden, or option two, the entire burden. Can I make a suggestion, Tammy? Can I say that? Um, that's a little confusing. I think someone should propose an amendment for the government takes the whole vote, vote that up or down, and then if that fails, then go back to the language as is now. I like and that, and I accept question. that. So we're going to second that. Up. Okay, we're going to roll with You're that. You're asking for an amendment of some of oh, language no. that's not correct. Well. Yeah. The, Resolutions in in front of the board now. You're so make the amendment for the change you want, Mark, or you and Mitch want, and then vote. Let's vote that. So that 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 would be what Justine said. Oh, Justine recanted, but we're going to go down the road. No, I'm finding I'm finding where it's, it says it. It's, 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 it doesn't make no, it doesn't make a difference. I'm sorry. It doesn't make a difference, Justine. We're voting, we're voting it like what Andrew said and what Tammy said is is it works wonderful. Great. But does, but does it because I thought we, we were making a statement, but we weren't we weren't ex really expecting, or at least I wasn't we were expecting I, I, I the government to take on the full burden. We just wanted to making the statement as to how we felt. I so, just don't think we're gonna move forward if we don't do this. This is something so, different now. It's different because the committee isn't agreeing on what was actually discussed. And right. even when right. we're viewing the YouTube, there seems to be confusion. So no, you know what? It's because there's so many back and forths, but it's it's lines. Okay. 19054. Right. Justine you, you found the line? Justine and Mariama were part of the working group. It, it doesn't make a difference. It's what is here before the board. I our parliamentarian has made a suggestion we're going with. So it's a roll call to change this, therefore be it resolved, to have the government pay 100% versus a portion. Lucian, take it away. Okay. We're going to do a roll change. call vote on the amendment. Motion to amend. Can you, can you clarify what saying yay or nay means in this? Yay, yay means. You want the government to take a 100% uh, share of the burden. Uh, nay is keep the language as written. Right. 
Okay, and Maruso. Wait, can I add to that? As far as what it means, on, that baby. means that we're saying we do not want the law. We want it removed. No, no. So there is no congestion. Let's vote. Saying we don't want the law. We do want the law. Then there is no tolling fee. Let, let, we still want clean air. Please, let's not spin it, and let's okay. vote. Okay, everybody, everybody goes on mute. Everybody, when Lucian calls your name, I'm going on mute too. When Lucian calls your name, it's a yes or a no. Okay, everybody got it? We can move Lucian. really fast. Yes, here we go. Amoruso. Yes. Hank. Abstain. Brown Kennedy. Abstain. Cell. Chang. Abstain. Chapman. Charcutian. Abstain. Cole. Abstain. Kucha. Yes. Gam. Cunningham. Curtis. Curtis. Curtis abstain. Thank you. Herman. Abstain. Lynn. Yes. Francoeur. No. Friedman. Friedman. Friedman, yes. Thank you. Froman. Froman, yes. Dean. Yes. Gupta. Gupta, yes. James. Yes. <coughs> Joyce. Yes. Okay. Abstain. Canal. Abstain. Sorry, Patrick. Abstain. Thank you. Abstain. Kettering. Kettering, no. Capel. I believe it's left the meeting. Clementus. Did you get me? Um, Cassell says yes. Did not get you. And Cassell, yes. Thank you. Yep. Lucy, can you unblank blank that one? Um, oh, sorry. Clementus. Bill, are you still there? Yes. Okay, thank you. Lamory? Lamory, yes. Lerner? Lerner, yes. Lewinson? Lewinson, abstain. Mahoney? Mahoney, abstain. McHugh? McHugh, abstain. Uh, Meltzer? Meltzer abstains. Ihawk? Ihawk, no. On Jovi. On Jovi. More. Abstains. Schneck. Schneck abstains. Sung. Sung abstains. Abstains. And she. Z abstains. Zelter. Zelter, no. Okay. Um, the motion fails. Four opposed, 17 abstain, 13 in favor. Okay. Roll call on the vote. Here we go. Um, I, may I have a, a motion? Before you do that, please note that 140 Broadway will be shared. Uh, Right after this, it going straight in. Uh, motion to call the question. I need second. it. Second. Call the question. Second. Okay. Sorry. Call call the question means we're voting on the resolution as currently written. That's correct. Right. Thank you. Amoruso. Yes. Blank. Abstains. On Kennedy. Yes. 
Cassell. Are we voting again on what we just voted on? Hey. Yes. Sarah, this is this is for the whole resolution. The change it got voted did not make it in. So this is as presented as was emailed. Cassell votes yes. Chang. Chang abstains. Chapman. Charcutian. Charcutian votes yes. Oh. Ho votes yes. Kuchia. Kuchia votes no because it's not the wording we we agreed to. Cunningham. Curtis. Curtis abstains. Herman. Mr. Ehrman. Flynn. Flynn votes yes. Rancor. Rancor votes no. Friedman. Friedman yes. Froman. Froman yes. Goldstein. Yes. <clears throat> Gupta. Gupta votes yes. Thank you. James. Abstain. Joyce. K. K, hey, no. Canel. Canel, yes. Ketring. Ketring, yes. Clementus. Clementus, yes. Lemery. Lamery. Lerner. Yes. Lewinson. Lewinson abstain. Mahoney. Mahoney, yes. McHugh. McHugh, yes. Thank you. Meltzer. Meltzer, yes. Thank you. My hawk. My hawk's yes. Thank you. Bon Jovi. Uh, Moore. Moore, yes. Thank you. Uh, Schneck. Uh, Schneck. Schneck boat no. No. Thank you. Uh, Sung. Sung, yes. Thank you. And Z. Z, yes. Thank you. Zelter. Zelter abstain. Abstain. Okay. okay. I'm the sorry, Chip. This is Lamry. I missed yes. the call. Uh, Lamry votes yes. Lamry, yes. Okay. Thank Chapman you. Chapman votes you. yes. Chapman. Chapman. Okay. Lucian, can you screen share the reso for 140 Broadway, please? Very yes. quick. Uh, may, can the host give me presenter privileges, please? That okay. The motion passes. carries. It passes. Thank you. Yep. Okay. I am One going solution. to pull this pass bad boy up. I just gave it to community board, so if you can pass it to Lucian, I just couldn't find Lucian on there. I got it. Thank you. Thank you. Let's see. Sharing the right app. Okay, so we are here today because of what has happened. So you'll see some of it looks very familiar from the resolution that we passed. Uh, a lot of the details have come out except for the what they did in 2018, 2020. Um, concerns were raised. The applicant returned with a compromise, which is what they have. Keep going. Uh, we raised concerns, asked about sign offs. Right, and so during here, this is the important part during the CB1 executive committee that they attested to that they had them, um, which is also what, in fact, uh, Mr. August said today that they were all all set. 
However, we got an email from DCP and it's very specifically quoted what the reactions and what it was and what they said. Um, and in essence, if they move the bike parking, then they need to come in for another design certificate, which has not been done. DCP affirmed in the email the applicant went to DCP in 2018 uh, seeking a design cert, but subsequently did not pursue the action. And then further affirmed by mail food trucks are not permitted, obstructions, et cetera, which we know. So therefore, Community Board 1 rejects the application for revocable consent unless Department of Transportation has DCP issue a design certificate, which means they'd have to come back here, confirms the Landmarks Preservation Commission has reviewed and approved designs prior to applicant presenting to the Community Board or any approval is given. The applicant and the street vendor project must consult with the vendors who must agree to a new plan that is approved by both DCP and LPC and does not negatively impact the vendors. Because otherwise, where we would be is we would have, yeah, the vendors would be out of luck because they wouldn't be allowed on Liberty Street. So that's where it is. If we don't have any questions for any hands, it's a roll call and we go home. So I see hands. Oh, yeah, hands. I, I, say it again. If we vote yes, what happens? If we vote no, what happens? If you vote no, then they then they can, they can potentially get their benches. Even though we voted the other one down, this that this is very specific, telling them what they need to do. They need to. They need. <laughs> they basically have to go through the process. If we vote if, yes, we're saying you have to go through the process, and we're protecting the street vendors. You're protecting not only the street vendors who could have been screwed because their plan was not approved by LPC or DCP, Got so it. or they would have been displaced. And you're, you're supporting all of the work that we've done before and saying, you know what, you, you got to go through the right steps. You just can't lie to us. So the disingenuous part was when they were talking about putting the street vendors on Liberty Street and moving the bicycle rack because they can't, they have no pap, no permission to move the bicycle rack. Get it. So, yes, voting yes means helping everybody. Right. All right, Andrew, you have a question. No, I'll lower my hand. Thank you. Jeff Myhoff, do you have a question on this one? Oh, I'm sorry. I'll lower my hand. Okay, Alice, take us home. Um, I object to the way this is being thrown out at 11 a.m. It was an incredibly controversial and difficult, uh, long, you know, yeah. fight for this plaza on this community board. But I would like to add uh, a few uh, whereases. So, and I can um, just read them during the March 20th, 2018 Landmarks Preservation Commission public hearing on 140 Broadway. Several of the LPC commissioners went on record opposing the addition of benches at the west side of the plaza. Despite their understanding that the Broadway edge was not part of their LPC's purview, the commissioners hoped that DOT would listen to the LPC proceedings in advance of their decision. That would be one amendment to add to the whereas. Perfect. Two, the addition of benches along the Broadway side of 140, 140 Broadway was opposed by all of the city's primary preservation groups, including the MAS, HDC, Docomomo, Landmarks Conservancy, in addition to Community Board 1 in 2018. Three, and last, City Controller Scott Stringer's audit of New York City POPs in 2017 indicated that 140 Broadway was not in compliance with POPs regulations at that time. The audit indicated a violation resulting from cars parked on the POPs on Liberty Street. It is unlikely that cars would be noted as violations along Liberty Street and that food trucks would not. That's sort of just something that we don't have to add, but that's just something I'm stating. The, the amendment would end with pops on Liberty Street. I'll send these to you if you accept them. Um, accept it. Thank Let's you. Alice, send me too, please. Sure. sure. Okay. Can I call the question? Second. Second. We'll call and then we're home. Thank you, everybody. Okay, so I am going to stop sharing my screen. Okay, here we go from the top. Amoruso. Amoruso. Blank. Blank, yes. Brown Kennedy. 
Brown Kennedy, yes. Thank you. Cassell. Cassell, yes. Chang. Chang votes yes. Chapman. Chapman votes yes. Charcutian. Charcutian votes yes. Cole. <laughs> Cole votes yes. Chuchia. Chuchia votes yes. Did you get Mark's vote? I didn't hear it. But I, I did not yes. hear it. Did Mark, were you here? He's. I think he's here. That's why I'm saying that. Keep going. He's he he can get back to me before the he end. Can of this. Do, he can go second call. Keep going. Uh, Curtis. Curtis votes yes. Herman. Herman. Flynn. Flynn votes yes. Thank you, Francoeur. Francoeur votes yes. Friedman. Friedman yes. Thank you. Roman. Roman, yes. Thank you. Goldstein. Goldstein, yes. Thank you. Gupta. Gupta, yes. Thank you. James. James, yes. Thank you. K. K, yes. Thank you. Canell. Canell, yes. Thank you. Kettering. Kettering, yes. Thank you. Clementus. Clementus, yes. Thank you. Lamory. Lamory, yes. Thank you. Lerner. Lerner, yes. Thank you. <laughs> Lewinson. Lewinson, yes. Thank you. Mahoney. Mahoney votes yes. Thank you. McHugh. McHugh, yes. Thank you. Meltzer. Oh, Meltzer, yes. Thank you. Uh, my hawk. My hawks, yes. Thank you. More. More, yes. Thank you. Schneck. Schneck votes yes. Thank you. Sung. Sung, yes. Thank you. Rounding it out here. Z. Z, yes. Thank you. Zelter. <laughs> Zelter, yes. Thank you. And Amoruso? Am Amoruso, yes. Thank you. Okay, the eyes have it. Thank you, everybody. Again, we hope not to be here till 11 o'clock, a lot of nights. What we really would like is all the work to be done in committee so we don't have to rehash here. I appreciate all the time and the efforts. There is so much before us, and it is so late. So go in peace and have a good night. See you all. Thank later. you. Good night. Thank you. Well, Thank everyone. You. Bye. Have a good night. Good night. Love you. Bye.